Bock ist da? special tonight guys i hope you're having a wonderful wonderful evening uh, we have a fantastic show ahead of us two fantastic artists are going to be coming on very very shortly we've got the awesome russell hogg popping on we've got the wonderful griffo from jailbird and we've got loads of spooky stuff in between so pop a hello in the comments guys when you pop in uh, we're really looking forward to presenting you for the next two hours uh, some great great content we've also uh, got a, a collaboration with the brilliant cafe uh, just around the corner uh, from us on Ballyfermot Road, uh, Bump and Grind. Uh, do check them out uh, at, on Instagram on Bump and Grind One, and uh, give them a follow. We're going to talk a little bit about them uh, towards our middle segment. But we've got loads of great stuff happening today. As you can see, we decorated the studio all Halloweeny and spooky. Um, we're going to be giving away some prizes as well, courtesy of Bump and Grind as well, guys. So uh, if you have any photos of any pumpkin carvings or any costumes that you've ready for this Halloween, uh, do send them in. The details are in the description there. So there's an email there. You can actually send them on uh, to us at any moment throughout the show. And we're going to pop them up uh, onto the screen and uh, we're going to have a special guest in uh, to judge them for us. So, uh, Keto, how's it going, man? Are you there with me? What's the story? Good, you're looking very greeny. Yeah, yeah, that's my, I had no costume, you know, so. So you just green it on up. It's great you can just do that, <laughs> isn't it? I just, like, I just turn myself green. <laughs> yeah, I, I put that mask on and like literally five seconds, I just couldn't breathe. So I just, I just whipped it off. It's not gonna happen for the show. So uh, I'm absolutely normal uh, today, but uh, at least we have all this uh, cool decorations on behind us. Uh, so you're looking forward to the show? Yeah, I'm looking very forward to it. Uh, cool. I have a little voice for Halloween for people. Where is it? Oh, it's somewhere there. There it is. <laughs> Rune Halloween with chocolate covered Brussels. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's the way yeah, to do yeah. it. I guess uh, trick or treating and all that jazz is back now, isn't it? This year, I'm not even too sure. Um, but we've uh, we've got a great show ahead of us. Really looking forward to this. Uh, haven't done a themed show uh, for Transmission TV, uh, so this is a first. Yeah, um, it's a bleeding head a nightmare. <laughs> a lot to do. There was a lot to do and organise before today. So hopefully everything will go uh, yeah as smooth as possible, right? 
that's what we kind of. I'm hope hoping. For. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. Pop into the comments, guys. Let us know that you're in uh, with us. Uh, be great to hear from you. Let us know how you're doing. Uh, we obviously have Q and A's as well uh, with all of the artists as well. So um, do prepare any questions or any kind of comments you might have for our two special guests uh, this evening. Uh, we're also back with Indie Drive, uh, Archie in the comment section. Archie, good to see you there, by the way. And uh, we're going to be covering Primary Colours, uh, their recent track. Um, so do stick around for that as well. Uh, yeah, just it's going to be going to be pretty cool. We're going to see how it goes. We got some special treats for you guys. We got some really cool stuff. So uh, do stick around and uh, share the stream. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, do hit that subscribe button and the like. It always helps. Uh, every little helps. And we've got some more uh, ways you can help our community as well uh, through Patreon and stuff like that in the description. If you guys are interested. But let me get cracking and introduce um, our very first guest. And, you know, I'm really excited because this is a guest that I, uh, like, we work together. We spend time together uh, in the past at events. So it's just great to have him on the show. It's great to catch up, you know. It's, it's a nice chance to just catch up with friends as well. So um, this guy is a, is a friend of mine, and I'm, I'm so happy to have him. A uh, friend of ours, Keto, right? We know, we know this gentleman very well. Work, uh, sure, sure, I worked with... Uh, what's that, Griffo? I worked with... I, will, I can't say his name. I have to wait for no, you to say his you name. you do. Yeah, I tricked you I there. worked with this man for quite many <laughs> this years. This gentleman. Oh, don't be... Uh, Sean's trying to bleed and feckin' sneak in on me mic here, you know? <laughs> That's okay. We didn't get anything. But yeah, we I both worked with him. We, we worked on him quite a bit in uh, Shin A primarily. <laughs> Uh, which Should is an absolute you. pleasure. He is a fantastic... Um, <laughs> he, yeah, yeah. He, Sean made the good point there that it says it on the name of the, uh, the stream. It does. It does, in fairness. It does. <laughs> we, we have already given it away. But let me introduce our first guest. So he spent a decade performing in the Irish uh, independent music scene as a singer-songwriter. He's a multi-talented man uh, with skills in sound engineering, uh, event promotion, and is a highly skilled drawer. He also starred in The Voice of Ireland and blew away the judges. He performed at festivals such as Electric Picnic. He ran his own open Mike Knight um, in Shin A on Mondays. Uh, he released a recent track there uh, called Shadows, uh, which was this spring, which signified his start uh, to his uh, first Spotify releases under his name, and he's currently working in Fibbers. Please welcome to the show the wonderful, the amazing Russell Hogg! <laughs> what's up, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're real. They're real. They're real. They're real. <laughs> Have a seat, brother. Chillax. Grab yourself a microphone. Oh. Let's just wait for the round of applause. There, there we go. They have finished. Man, it's so oh, great to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 crowd, the crowd is too kind. The crowd is too kind. Just funny. I, I, I saw you and like I, I realized it's only when I saw you in person again, I was like, I haven't seen you in two years probably. It's been about two years. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it's that been crazy. It's been crazy. Yeah. Two How? years. Like two years of just being a hermit yeah everyone's like that though aren't they yeah I think everyone's so just like don't know what to do in crowds anymore we don't know what we do we don't know how to react with people we're like hissing at yeah, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people hissing these days stop how? hissing guys stop hissing yeah guys chillax <laughs> in the back there chillax in the back but you you you're starting to work in fibbers now are you kind of getting yeah. you are yeah. busy and up now are you can you get used to it all yeah, again yeah um oh like riding a bike a bike really? with no, a bike with no wheels fish really. to water but uh yeah um yeah we were we were right right up till Thursday night, the twenty first of this month, we were are we going ahead? Are we not with the with the restrictions? Where are they gonna let us you know, where they're gonna keep their promise and let us open up and all this kind of stuff. So they did they kinda we came back with uh with a clearer path of how we we're gonna go with uh with all the new uh, regulation, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So we were so we, we thankfully we didn't have to cancel any gigs, basically. Yeah, it was weird because the the first <coughs> announcement was like, oh uh Nightclubs, yeah, and then gigs sitting. Yeah, with masks. And, and it just didn't. And, and obviously, there was a lot of like frustration and anger and confusion over what that meant. Mm. And, and fair play to the, uh, the, the, I think, uh, the powers that be that kind yeah. of went back in and, and hashed it out. The, I think it was the, the Arts Council and the Music Collective and uh, yeah. the Witness Association kind of came in and said, Look, guys, we need clarity. Yeah. And they got it. Fair play, they got yeah. it. Like, so. We were all full full steam ahead. Then uh, we were allowed to have people standing at the, at, at a live uh, live events and all that kind of stuff. So because um, Fibbers is, is a nightclub and a live venue, right? So they get the so the double bonus. they had a double confusion of of, of what was allowed and what wasn't allowed. So yeah. we got it cleared up. Everything's tickety boo, as they say. Great. And where we were going, we had uh, on the twenty second and twenty uh, third, two nights of just pure 
metal yeah back, back at it, <laughs> i love back it, at it yeah. and are yeah, you feel yeah. do you feel like <laughs> just how do you feel about it? like do you just feel like oh i love it yeah 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 i mean we we were in um we had we had a, a brand new sound system being put in up, upstairs nice we got a brand new uh floorboards for the stage brand new carpets got everything nice and shiny looking Great. And shiny, fibber, yeah. shiny. Well, I mean, now the, dank, the, 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 the dank came back pretty quickly, <laughs> you know. You know, you, you can't be fibrous without a bit of dank. You can't avoid the dank. Know? Yeah. yeah. So, that, yeah, I mean, it's still, you know, we haven't, we haven't forgotten who we are. Good man, you know good I mean? man, I love it. And, and have you played any gigs since? Did you play um, a gig recently in Chennai? I was playing Chennai the 1st of October with their fantastic series, uh, In Through the Back Door. Oh, yeah, 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 An of absolutely course. amazing Livestream, series. Livestream, was it or pre uh, no, it was, no, it was just live gigs. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, okay, great, I, great. I was involved with them, um, their previous uh, streaming gigs on was uh, it was Christmas last year I think it I was. remember that was live stream and that was live stream stuff yeah. and I was being uh, I was uh, doing sound for that in post production I didn't actually get to play but uh, again amazing amazing a bunch of, uh, of of artists and into the outdoor is still going or into the back door is still going on uh, till yeah, the end of the month. Jailbird, our guest today, performed on Friday just there. I That's think? right, and yeah. apparently brought the house down with them. I heard yeah. it was a fantastic. I, there was a, there's, a, there's a, one of the lads in working in Chine, uh He was being inundated with can I get guest list? Can I get on? And there was a queue out the door for them. Apparently, really? the place Jeez. was up. And Mick Pyro as well, another yeah Dublin legend, absolutely. Yeah. Um, who was out there? Uh, the two of them uh, apparently did an absolutely fantastic show. I raged. I missed it myself. I was I was working. Yeah. It was my first night back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doing my own stuff uh, or back in Fibbers like so but I was raging I missed that gig I have to say but uh, by all accounts I've heard it was an absolute smasher of a gig that's awesome so everywhere is yeah. packed now it seems which is great everyone's hungry <clears throat> yeah it seems it seems that way always uh, which is good so, you know it's it's mm. we're finally on the on the on the on the road back yeah. to the light at the end of the tunnel yeah you know yeah, we're yeah. we're finally we're finally allowed out yeah and 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 gig and, and see our friends again you and, know? and uh, I know yeah and you it's know? mad that we held on for so long and fair play to all of us for mm. you know, to go through all that shy how, yeah. how was it for, like what did you get up to you, you you mentioned hermit and stuff did you did you work on music <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that or I mean we all I had no choice to be a hermit yeah, yeah yeah I mean it's funny with me the less I do or the less I have to do the less I do my brain doesn't mm. work unless I have things to do right yeah so creativity for me uh, is a push when I don't have a million things to do Mm. If I only have this one thing to do, like whether it's record, or like you know, I have to literally get myself up and into my. I have a little studio in, in the house now. It's just in the, just in the, in the box room. Yeah, and that's where I, that's our, where I recorded uh, Shadows, the first right. single. Yeah, yeah. And I'm currently recording uh, some other stuff now as well, and hopefully getting something out there. I also have a back catalogue. See, I did a, an album about ten years ago called Man on Fire, and never released it. Just had a had a a, a launch night. Had people down. Uh, we had an industry night. We were kind of we were playing in front of uh, a few industry heads. We had um, uh, an A and R rep from Warner Brothers was came over to have a talk with us and did a seminar with us. We had a couple of uh, uh, sound engineers and producers from uh, Real World Recordings. Um, it's Peter Gabriel's uh, studio in London. Wow! They came over and had a chat with us, just talking about the industry. And uh, there was a few of us, a few bands, I kind of got together with uh, a couple of other guys to kind of organise this. Mm. Uh, and we had Stevie Wonder's manager over as well. What? And this is about ten years now, maybe a little longer than ten years ago. We had it in um, this. I'm trying to remember now where we had it. We had it in a, in a. Oh, where was Smithfield? It was okay. a venue in Smithfield. Uh, the name is absolutely gone from my head. The name of the, of the venue. Um, it's not there anymore. I guess. Oh is no, it? it is there. It's, it's a, it's a, a, it's, it's, no, it's, a, it's the hostel. I can't think of the name. Oh of it, yeah, I know. Which, it's kind of in the middle of the, the square. It's right, isn't it? it's right beside the. It's right beside James's distillery. Yeah, I can't remember. And what I can't it is, remember yeah. for the life. I played me. a quiz in mm. there. We won a lovely quiz place. In there. Real nice yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, it's nice actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and for the life, of me I can't remember. And the you name, were with a no. band at that stage, was it? I we had a full band that, on that night. Yeah, yeah. so we uh, we rehearsed uh, our, our shows and had a full band. And uh, again, the album was like I think it was ten tracks on it. Yeah. And just didn't did just, just just that's where it went. That's where it went, and that's where I left it. And what, what made you kind and of leave it? Like, what was kind of the apathy? Yeah, <laughs> not so much apathy. Um, I don't know, uh, like streaming wasn't, uh, and, and uh, you know, Spotify wasn't a thing at the time. Yeah. Uh, iTunes was, but iTunes was pretty hard to get onto at the time. Really? It wasn't, was it? It, yeah. it was kind of a, it's not as easily accessible nowadays to get your music online as it was 
in its infancy, yeah. which was about 10, 12 you know, years ago. Like you needed but a manager now, probably, you needed I, guidance. You know, we, ju we just didn't know how to put it on. Yeah, and yeah. so when the time came around where you can actually literally just go onto Bandcamp. Pay or 40 quid on to, or whatever yeah, for a yearly. Uh, CD Baby or mm. DistroKid or one of these places. Yeah. And they just do it for you. I mean, you can make um, your own you know, graphic I mean, design really easily nowadays yeah, as well, Yeah, you know, it? and, it's, and, yeah. It's, and it's like, you know, online music now and, and, and putting your music online now is just so much easier than it was back then. Yeah. So I do you think that's a good thing? Like, yeah, I do. I honestly yeah. do because now, like, I can you know I, if I have a song that I'm happy with, like Shadows, we finished mm. finished that song in the spring and just put it straight up, you know, yeah. put it straight up. And uh, now with with the help of my uh, wife, who uh, is my manager at the moment, amazing. Yeah, um, she did, she finished a course in uh, college in uh, Dunleary uh, music production. And uh, she, as part of her project, she was getting stuff uh, done. She's getting stuff ready for me to go online on that. So actually, what, what, whatever I have online now is is is, is due to Fantastic. her and, and her uh, commitment to to her to her uh, craft. And, and she, yeah. yeah. And tell us about the instrumentation on the on the track as well. We have got some great piano on there as well. And tell us who. Yeah. Kind of so this was, it was all the instrumentation was all me. Um, did it? I uh, recorded on a just a DAW system, uh, Logic Pro. Cool. Uh, but the, the 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 piano was actually I wrote the piano line a long time ago. Mm. I just had this in my head, this kind of sparse idea for this song, mm. and didn't really have any lyrics to it. Just had this idea, and it was more it was more kind of a a cinematic feel I wanted for the for the for the song. You know, kind of scenes in my head and what kind of music goes with that type of a scene. Because I love mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big cinema buff. I love. I love. Uh, Have you seen Dune yet? Yeah. Haven't. Are you excited about it? I am mad to see that show. I saw it yesterday. Is it any good? It's fucking unbelievable. I've heard. It's, I've heard. Actually, I've heard mixed reviews. To be honest, Did you? I've heard mixed reviews. Yes. Are, they, are, are the ones that say it's bad have seen the, the older version or read the I think book? the ones who have seen the older version have said it's good because that old version is, it's, that's a tough watch, man. Yeah. I don't know if you've watched I it. Seen, no, I'm planning to one. watch it yeah, now it's, because oh, I watched it. It's a tough watch, dude. It? Oh, stop. It's a tough watch. Yeah. Uh, Imagine watching Jodorowsky's Yod one, though. Yeah, yeah. That, that one didn't get released. That no, it it yeah, yeah, I, like, yeah. I stayed up late last night watching the documentary on that thing, man. Really? After I watched the movie, yeah. it, was, it was so fascinating. And you know what? The documentary's probably better than the movie. Yeah, probably. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because there's a few out there at the moment. There's, a, there's another one, a uh, documentary movie that hasn't gotten made, one by uh, Kevin Smith's uh, film. He wrote, a, he wrote a, a Superman script, Superman Lives. Have you heard this one? No, no. Oh my God, this is crazy, right? So this, the, the script was uh, written by Kevin Smith of uh, Jane Silent Bob fame, who's written so many. He used to write for Daredevil as well, uh, the comic books and all this kind of okay. stuff. And he's a big comic book guy. Um, and he was tasked for this film anyway to write a script. He wrote a script for it, and it kind of got changed as they do. Yeah. Uh, but they got Tim Burton of uh, we all know who Tim Burton is. Yeah, yeah. We got they got him in to direct the film, so he kind of co-wrote the film with him. And none other than Nicolas Cage was going to be oh the Man of God, Steel, Jesus Superman. Christ. So, and the idea was like, <laughs> Imagine I that. mean, what a weird film. Yeah, what yeah. What a weird concept. And his concept, his idea was, uh, Tim Burton's idea was, well, you know the concept of Superman is a weird concept anyway, so we need to get a weird actor into playing. Right, we've got to make it weirder. It's yeah, already weird, yeah, so we'll just yeah. make it even, take it to the next level. And there level. was supposed to be a cameo of uh, Michael Keaton's Batman in it, and uh, there was like, there was a whole big thing about it, but it, and it actually got to pre-production. There's actually, you can actually see pre-production stills of uh, Nicolas Cage in a Superman oh costume. My God, it's amazing. Yeah? It's amazing. Like, it's like, well, it's amazingly interesting. Let's put yeah, it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, man, check it out. And he's, uh, Kevin Smith's trying to be getting this this documentary funded now. So I think he has a GoFundMe page uh, to get the documentary finished about this film that never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's like, I, I, it's I, watched the, I watched the it? worst, I watched the first like 15 minutes they had it up uh, live and it's wild. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like so interesting. What could have been? Yeah, you know I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, how, how would they would have changed the landscape of, of comic I mean, book movies? The aesthetic this, of, like, of Tim yeah, Burton yeah. stuff, like in the Superman yeah, movie, in a Superman strange, movie. isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. Well, like, it would be pretty dark, but I suppose, I wonder if there'd be a bit of humor and stuff. And quirky and weird and like the. Would it work, do you reckon, for Superman? Like, because you're a big. Comic book buff, right? Yeah. You're a big DC universe DC kind fan, of, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, would you do you think that is acceptable? Would DC fans go like, "Here, this is an absolute joke"? Or do you well, I mean, you have to accepted? you have to recognize the time in which it was made as well. It was made in the late '90s. This film, mm. so in the late '90s, uh, you know, DC films or, or comic book movies were a joke, really. Mm. Right. Yeah. They weren't really taking seriously. And, and like I mean, the old and, Batman and, and, and Robins. I mean, 
they weren't really taken seriously by mm. Hollywood or by Hollywood filmmakers. They were, you know what I mean? I mean, we had, I mean, again, Tim Burton has, uh, you know, he really did do a lot for the genre and his dark spin on the two Batman films that he did in 89 and 92. Mm -hmm. And then following on from that, there was the animated series uh, was heavily influenced by Tim Burton, the Batman animated series. And then that went to heavily influence other films. So you kind of, like, when you're as big a nerd about things that I, as I am, you kind of see the linear path of movies right. and how, yeah, and then, you know, people kind of attribute um, Brian Singer's X-Men, the first okay. X-Men movie, 2001, I think that was, being the, the start of the superhero renaissance, as they call it. Right, with Avengers you know, then coming in and all that. And all this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And then people harken back even to Blade, 1997, mm. as is, and people don't realise that that's actually a comic book character sometimes. Yeah, I didn't know And now he's going that. back in, uh, Mahershala Ali is playing him in the MCU now. He's, that's going to be really exciting. Wow, wow. So I know too much. I know too much I mean, about it. I mean, you could do a whole show about this. Like, this really is the good. thing now. This is the thing. But we are going to have a, a fun segment together, which is going to yeah. include some of this stuff. Okay. We also do have a Q&A, guys. So do ask um, our, uh, well, comic book both DC both, but also <laughs> musician, of course, don't forget. Uh, I also um, play the musics. <laughs> he also plays the musics. We're, we're, we're going to promote a bit of that too. Um, but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have a Q&A now in a second. Um, so get your questions up there, guys. I've got the comments there. We can kind of see, we can see them here. And um, we're going to play uh, one of uh, Russell's pre-record songs, which he recorded back in the studio a couple of weeks ago. So uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. You've got something that I need An aching hunger that I have to feed I'll burn this city in your name Bleach out the shadows that hide the blame I was loved once upon a time In the glory days of honey and wine And they took you from me And now I'm scorned I'll lay them all to waste even up the score, I'm a bad, bad, bad man. A faceless man, I am your foe. Have my sights on you, and I have set them low. I am the walker, it's plain to see And you just don't know what to make of me Cause I'm a bad, bad, bad man I'm a bad, bad man I'm a bad, bad man I'm a bad, bad man See me coming, look the other way A lot of men didn't that had a price to pay I breathe fire, my blood is gasoline The truth is the likes of me you've never seen Cause I'm a bad, bad, bad man I 
And that was Bad Man by the awesome Russell Hogg guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that performances. There are two more performances uh, as well uh, to go. Uh, so looking forward to seeing them as well. Russell, first time checking yourself out there performing. What do you looking think of that? Really good. <laughs> looking pretty really good. good, I gotta yeah, say. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it uh, sounds great. The guys in Tsunami, I tell you something, they know what they're doing. Don't they, they do. They do. They know what they're doing. Yes. They really do. Yes, yeah. they are. They I, are I, I came in to do, the, to do the, the performances was a couple of weeks ago. And I have to say, I was just so impressed. I got a little bit of a tour of the place and really like what an, a whopper little place this yeah. is. Like it's it, really, it's cool. Man. It's, it's amazing really cool. how, what yeah, they've yeah. done, isn't yeah, it? It's just it absolutely really amazing. Is, yeah, so yeah, very yeah. grateful to, to know the guys absolutely. and be able to do the show yeah, here and, and, and make such a professional sort of videos for musicians. Like it's Yeah, I mean, that, the, the quality is, 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 I'm really impressed with it. Like, yeah, really oh, impressed with it. So yeah, chuffed yeah, you like yeah. it. So Q&A, we've got a question already from Enya Quinn. Enya Quinn. Yeah. Hi Enya. Enya, thanks for, uh, she says class voice. Oh, thank you very much. Well, there you go, Enya. Thanks for commenting in and thanks for bringing in a question here. So she said, if you could play any venue in the world, what would it be? Oh, man. That's That's a a tough one, I'd say. That's a tough one. Yeah, because like some of them are real scary. Have you played outside of Ireland? Uh, Have I played? No, I don't think I have. I've barely been outside Ireland. No. (laughs) Would you like to? (laughs) Like, is that something that's in your kind of... Uh, to be honest Plans. with you, I don't know. I uh, like touring outside Ireland because I like. I mean, I work in the industry for so long, and I've and I've you know, I, I've uh, dealt with so many bands and talked with so many bands that have done the touring outside Ireland thing and taken it on themselves. And it just seems like so, it's such a time-consuming pursuit. Mm. Music in general, I think, is a, such a time-consuming pursuit, and you you really need to dedicate that time and. Uh, to do that, to go on tour, to, to, to figure out the venues, to figure out how much it's going to cost you, to figure out logistics of getting your gear there and all this kind of stuff. Being on the road, there's like a, talking to uh, some of the guys from Mutefish a long time ago and they mm. were doing, uh, which are one of my favorite are they still bands. Together, actually? I, I have no clue. I, I don't hope know. So. I hope Fantastic, so too. Yeah, yeah, I hope so too. Um, but talking to them a, a while ago about the touring and it really gets to them sometimes mm. you know i mean they're they're doing these these, these crazy tours they're around doing Europe. gigs after gigs and traveling and, and you know it's gigging and gigging and hard gigging and then getting uh, getting into a, getting into their little bus packing their gear up heading off for another 12 hour driving session down to wherever mm. and you know and the same with there's, a, there's another uh, fantastic act uh, the lead the former lead singers from the Eskies. Mm. Um, in Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah, 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 and yeah, he he's he's now uh, old sea legs. Is his is yes. his new and yes. absolutely wonderful performer. Mm. I had the pleasure of uh, recording him with Shine, uh over the Christmas period last year um, with uh, their with their and with their he's series. A, he's a busy and he's, musician he's as well. Busy. Isn't he? He's so busy. Yeah. He's just after launching his new tour mm. and his dates all over England. And you're just looking at the dates, and you kind of and you kind of look at the. The logistics of getting from like one venue to the next. Right. Yeah. How yeah, is he yeah, doing yeah. it? I how don't know he how he's doing like? it. How is yeah, it? Where yeah, is he? Yeah. Where does he have the time? Yeah. You know, so I like. I don't know if I'd have the stamina for that. I mean, I, I've done. I, I've yeah. done like. Uh, what about in Ireland? Like, what what would be a venue for you in Ireland? A then? venue for me. Uh, in Ireland. Tony like, says Tala Theatre. Tala Theatre. Oh yeah, the old, uh, the new, the brand new. Tala the new Theater. one is that new? Did yes. They do it up, did there they? was a mm-hmm. now we could be here for another two hours talking about the history of Tala Theatre. Let me tell you. I love how passionate uh, you are about you know, all these well, I mean, I grew up in Tala Theatre. My mother, right. uh, God rest her, uh, she was uh, a patron of Tala Theatre and was a director and was on the managing director board of Tala Theatre wow, and I did uh, did loads of shows there. And I did I acted on stage with. She actually directed me in a few shows as well, really? which is fantastic. I did um, not know that. For a lo- uh, yeah, it's a long, long time ago now, and mm. that was the old theatre. So this, the, the theatre now is in its third lifespan because okay. they had an old theatre. Um, 
was basically just a, a, an old an old uh, crate shed almost at the back of somewhere. I can't remember exactly what it was, like the back of Time of Park, somewhere like that. Then they got a new theatre at the back of uh, the... Um, I can't think of any of the names. There's a pub yeah. in, in the... Pub I don't know Tala at all, yeah, by the way. Yeah, pub, yeah no, like, I can't even help there's you, the, the, the Cooker's Nest. Right, there's okay. A, there's a name of a pub on the Green Hills Road, which has uh, since uh, gone into... is closed down, but uh, mm. they ha were at the back of that, and they got they had a nice big theatre then. It was like a 150-seated theatre. Mm. Then they actually... I remember being on set, being on uh, site yeah. as a 10-year-old boy, looking at this thing being built, and... Uh, Everybody's hands on deck, and you know we were we were scrubbing old uh, theater seats that we got donated for us, and building. Wow! All that kind so it's like a like, community effort to kind of yeah, get it going you know, together. And, great. and and the, the people involved who are still involved in that, like, and still kind of keeping it going. And then a developer came in, and and uh, recently, a couple of years ago, well, we're talking maybe five, six years ago at this stage, or even longer, and talked about knocking the knocking the theater and building um, housing uh, uh, houses and apartments. Of course. And yeah. But, build, but, bringing, but, but, but bringing the theatre up towards the road more and having a brand new, I think it was like a 200 seat theatre mm -hmm. with a bar and rehearsal space and the whole lot. So that has uh, that has been completed, mm -hmm. that new theatre. Now I haven't, I don't know much about what's going on at the time. Because, have you played you know, it yet? Have you played no, it? No, I haven't time? been involved mm -hmm. in the new theatre now, to be honest. Um, I would love to get back into it. It's just with, with the way uh, the way I work and I work nights, so oh, theaters, yes, you, are, you know, yeah, rehearsing yeah, yeah. night times and all that kind of stuff. So what, hopefully I'll get something, in, uh, I'll, I'll get involved as well. Like um, on the, um, on the note of venues, like mm. what's or, or like I know you played Electro Picnic and stuff. Like mm. what's a, what's a what was the coolest gig you played? Like what was kind of the most fun gig? Honestly, the most fun gig I've had in recent years uh, was the first one back, Shine. I love playing Shine. Mm. I absolutely love it. I thought you were going to say Crystal Skull Sessions. Oh, uh, well, that wasn't Shine. Crystal Skull <laughs> Sessions, Shine. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that was a great gig, the, the last one we did. Because um, it was only like, it was, uh, they only sold 70 tickets. They were only allowed to sell 70 tickets. And so, like, what's it, like half capacity? For was whatever, it seated? Like, was know, it? It was seated, yeah. yeah. And so that's the most people I've ever played to. So. <laughs> So you, that was yeah, normal so, for you. Yeah, it's usually me and the barman. Like, and you're sold out. <laughs> we're sold out. Congratulations! Yeah. yeah, and it was great. It was I was I was uh, a ball of nerves. Uh, couldn't think couldn't think of any of the words saying in my songs as I got up on stage. But just had the crack. Had yeah, loads yeah. of fun. Uh, you know, had had friends there. Uh, great to see all the, the the bar staff from from Fibbers. Uh, oh, not from Fibbers. Sorry, from uh, Shine. Yeah. Back again. You know. And so with the keto do sound. Uh, Kigo was on sound. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Kigo's Our own producer sound. Kigo yeah. was he, doing he, sound in Shine. Believe it was. Yeah. It made me sound good as he always does. Huh? That was the first one back, wasn't it, Keith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one back. And we, only, we, we had only just gotten the sound system, a brand new Void sound system. New stage. It was literally, like, it was literally installed stage. like an hour before gig started. Yeah, I was about to say like an hour before a gig. We hadn't even hadn't even gotten time to tune it, nothing. Oh yeah, it was. And Keith was having a mare of a time. I'd say so. Uh, he having a mare of a time. I'd say so. He loves the crowds of air. It was I, handy having Russell there because like it was just like oh yeah we can work together. It's Russell grand. knows yeah. his stuff. He can jump up. We can get sound right. It's well, fine, yeah, I mean I, I I I I know the struggles of of, of a sound engineer. You Absolutely. Know, so. But you you deal. How do you deal with it? you did a you're pretty chillax I think. Oh no. No. Oh no. I, I, I shut down, I, man. I don't yeah, think I've yeah. ever seen you kind of. Yeah, yeah. No. Per like se. If, if if things don't go my way as a, as a as a performer, it's different because you're on stage and you're just you know you you turn into a game show host. Yeah, yeah, mode, yeah. And you chat and blah blah. blah. But as a as a sound engineer, you know, the smallest things can go wrong and trip you up. Things that shouldn't trip you up or haven't tripped you up in ten years, you know, and then you just one button yeah. that you haven't pressed and nothing goes on and nothing's right and everything's wrong. Yeah, yeah. Until you find that button. And, and so I have a meltdown every time when I try to find that button. Because it's not easily like it should be solvable, but it's uh, yeah, exactly. It yeah, should yeah. be easily solvable, you know, but it's, it's a thing silly, called yeah. problem solving. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. or or uh, you go through um you your go through your, your, yeah, exactly. You <laughs> go through your signal flow and you go, okay, it's going for the mic, it's going to the desk, well, but I'm getting lost somewhere here. Is it you know a cable? I mean? Is yeah, it this? You know I mean? Is it so that? Like, and you, and you do, yeah, yeah. your training comes back into it and your experience comes back into it. But yeah, all, more often than not, my biggest disasters as a sound engineer have happened because of one simple thing that I've overlooked. Right. You know, that's so just it's hard it not is. to get annoyed yeah. at yourself. It really is, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Ellen O'Shea is asking, any new music coming out? You already kind of touched on it a little bit, but can you give us a little bit more Hi about Alan. sort of what's, How are what's you? going up? Uh, yes, I am currently recording uh, some new music. Actually, the three songs that we have 
Sunday Night performing. I'm currently working on all three songs simultaneously. Really? Are you going to do an EP? Are you going to solo release or is it an album? Uh, I'm doing? going to be doing, I don't know actually. I haven't really discussed, I need to discuss that with my manager to see what mm. uh, the boss, see what she says. Cool. Uh, I'm working on, so, so I have a trilogy of songs called The Ballad of Mary Lee, mm -hmm. part one and two. And, I, and there's, there's a third one being written at the moment. So that'll be an EP. I don't mm -hmm. know when the third one's going to be finished. But that'll be an EP. It's like a murder ballad, uh, a tragic story of, of this uh, girl from Mary Lee. But it's it's a very much a story of a, of a, of a song, like you know, it's mm. so part one, two, and three. Um, and then you have a second EP as well. And I, yeah, so I have. I'm working on the, th the so the three songs that we're here, we're hearing now: uh, "Bad Man," "Dead Man Walking," and uh, "Breathe." Are all in production at the moment. Okay, brilliant. So I'm just kind of getting it to a point now uh, where I'm happy with it. So I'm going to get a drummer in uh, to to obviously do lay down some tasty beats. Sweet. Sweet. And then we're going to get it mixed, mastered, and uh, sent out to you lovely people all out there in Tinternets. Yeah, looking at forward to At some point, that. I don't know when that's going to happen because I just need to get up off my arse and do it. Look, we're patient, you know man. I mean? No <laughs> rush. Whenever you're ready. Like, uh, And by the way, the guys at home, all of Russell's details are in the description. So do follow him now uh, so you can keep updated to all of the uh, events uh, yeah, happening over yeah, the next couple of months. Yeah. So let's do our fun segment. Are you up for a bit of crack? Ah, sure. I'm always up for a bit of crack. All right, let's do it, Keto. Yeah. Do you want to roll the fun segment for Russell Hall? <laughs> All right. Nice. I love the graphics, Keto. There you go. The graphics. Keto and on the, the music graphics. is really good. Yeah. Like, it's really funny. I you like that. I like that. That's really good. Impress me. That's so, really good. Keto, do you want to give us a description on this or do you want me to fly ahead with, with describing this? It's pretty... Holy hand-drawn Batman. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Yeah. yeah, so like, uh, we're, like we're trying to try fly through these, will we? Yeah, Let's fly okay, through okay. these. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are, we, are we getting our... <laughs> we got our papers. You've got a, a hard book there. So basically, we're going to be drawing Batman in uh, one of these scenarios. And um, uh, I don't know if, if we're doing a poll or are we just going to go through them? I'd say we can just go through them. Yeah, seems good. Do you have your do you have your uh, oh, your your pen and paper there, Dave? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Did you bring your own totally, pencil? Totally unprepared. I know this is going to happen. I was. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, totally prepped. So you guys at home can decide uh, which drawing is better. So we've got Josh on uh, our technical team that is going to put up a poll and and uh, at the end okay, uh, cool. of each drawing, we're going to. Well, there's two in each one. Do you want to both draw the same thing? Or yeah, we draw the same because we want to okay. compare yeah, how yeah. bad mine is compared to Russell, who's an amazing drawer. I know. Don't big me up now. I haven't drawn. I haven't picked up a pencil in so long. Don't honest, worry. So. I don't. I don't need to big you up, brother. Uh. It's, it's this is it's horrific what I do <laughs> to paper with pencil. Like it's bad. Yeah. Right. Uh, we did this before, and it was it Batman was saving Alfred or Batman. Oh, Batman one point of the Joker. Come on. All right. How long do we have? Uh, I'll give you as uh, I'll give you as about two minutes each. Russell's already started here. Yeah, Hold go on, on a... start then. Oh my God. Oh Jesus Christ. So, um, do you draw much uh, comic book characters yourself, there, Russell? Exclusively. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. It's just a hobby. It's like it's. I've always. I've always been. Uh, Big into comic books and big into, and big into, uh, into just drawing, basically, yeah. When I've did always, it start for you? Like, when was your oh, first? Oh, like, uh, uh, like, very, very young, like 10, maybe. Oh my god, this is horrible what I'm doing here. This is so bad. Why did mine, I decide mine, mine to do this? Mine is much better, to be honest. But no, man, I, I'm actually here. literally, this is an absolute disaster. Yeah, I was always. I Do you was need more fan. time? Uh, man, like I need a <laughs> bleeding art lesson. <laughs> well, like here, right? Hold on, I'm not. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second now. Don't be, don't be rushing. Pure genius here. Oh, I yeah, forgot yeah, how yeah. Joker looks. Oh, yeah, I don't know which one I'm, are you doing the Jared Leto one or which one are you doing? I'm right. doing my own version of him. I don't know. Uh, Jared Leto was a bit of a disaster, right. wasn't he? You have it. That's it. I didn't even get the Joker in. All right. Well, like, keep going, so. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this one a little bit too seriously, lads. I think. You're just trying to um, make me look really bad, aren't you? I'm just going to do Batman like punching, and then I don't know if we're going to have 
time for Joker, but we'll see. Uh, this is probably the worst drawing I've ever drawn in my life. Well, I'm not far behind you, mate. <laughs> I love how modest you are, and it's just gonna, I bet you it's gonna be a masterpiece. Now, where's my, okay, let me just get this, where are going? Like, I've literally given up here, right. It, drawing's I mean, just one I mean, thing pressure, that I was never like. drawn to. Oh, tons, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's all I have, like, like, it's just all I have. That's the only trick in your bag of tricks, is it? Yeah, pretty much, and like doing the L presenting now and then, you know. I have to say, I'm very impressed with your presenting skills, my friend. Thanks very much, man. Uh, do you remember back in the days when I started Crystal Skull, how horrible I was? Ah, uh, you weren't that bad. I you mean, pretty good. I, I remember good. like going red and just like getting really embarrassed. But I overcame that. Thank God. Yeah. Practice, trial and error. That's it. Man. Maybe that's I all mean, I need to be a good. So come on, guys. I'm giving you a fight. All right, all right, all right. I'm I done. haven't even got the Joker yet. Hold on. <laughs> I don't even know how to do the Joker. <laughs> I'm just gonna do like a really weird smile. Just draw yourself, Dave. You're you're nothing but a Wait. Joker, Dave. I'm giving him a weird though. Elvis quiff. Joker doesn't have an Elvis quiff, but that that is dreadful. I, I bet you, that. I bet you, now. I'm gonna hang uh, Russell's one on my fridge. I mean, if I was given half a day to draw something, maybe. I, like, how long would it take you to do a draw? Are you patient drawer? Is this kind of pressure for you? Like, oh yeah, this is like. Holy you know, shit! I can see yours. It's fucking savage. Ah, uh, come on, it's not that good. It's not good at all, actually. Hold on. Shading is very important. Light composition. I'm giving you 50 seconds, guys. Okay. All right. Like, it's not like I can do anything else right now at this stage. I'm kind of just going to concentrate on Batman here rather than the Joker. And mine looks like a two-year-old drew it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, well, we have something. We have something. I forgot even what the bat symbol looks like. Oh, so did I, and I draw it like 10 times a day. Really? <laughs> Yeah, drawing under pressure is no fun. Though. 25 seconds. How many seconds? 25. Well, I'm, I'm done oh. now, finished. Well, I'm, well. Oh, Dave, I've just drawn some clouds. <laughs> right, well, you don't need clouds. <laughs> All right. Time's up. <laughs> Can you fix my camera there, guys? Just a little bit. There we go. Well, yeah. uh, Cheers. Okay. So uh, I guess we'll show uh, one Russell's. Uh, mine, yours first? Yeah, mine yours, first? because yours is going to be nice. Mine's going to be really good. Show yours first. Show yours first. Go on, go on. Let's see what we're up to. Go on. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> you, you got the ears, <laughs> you know, and, the, and there's a cape going Can somewhere. Can you focus on that? Like, and actually, don't focus. Maybe just keep yeah, it blurred. Yeah, focus on that. I mean, that's, you know, you got the ears. You'd know it was Batman. <laughs> I don't know what happened to his hand. I think he got stung by a bee. <laughs> he looks like that Pepper <laughs> Army character. He's getting the gains. I think that's like a, 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 a broccoli he's hitting them with. Broccoli, Captain yeah. Broccoli. Captain Broccoli, there <laughs> we go. Superhero, Captain Broccoli. Right, so we'll go over to the next, yeah? Yeah, okay. please uh, show the... Oh, look Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. look at this. <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, so do you want to put the poll up as well, Josh, while we're looking at <laughs> Russell's map? That's very good, man. Well uh, done. Well done. What era Batman is that in there? What, what kind of version is it? Well, I grew up with Tim Burton's Batman. I grew up with okay. Michael Keaton. That's Batman, that's mm. so he's kind that's of like... That's like an like 80s, is it? 89, so okay. I was... What, what was I, six when I when that came out? So I think I might have seen it, you know, not when I was in the cinema, but I was too young, mm. maybe a year or two later. But I was, I, was, I, was pre, I was about eight or nine when I first discovered Batman. Mm. And had and been drawn ever since. Really, then, yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Keto, so what, we'll do another drawing there. We'll just do one more, will we? Yeah, uh, okay, Yeah, cool. we'll do one more. Marcus Carcass uh, oh, is Oh, Marcus, Marcus, where are you? Where's yes. Oh, camera man. <laughs> Hey. There you go. Which one? This one? He's hey. in the center. <laughs> I'm a, I don't know which camera I'm on. I think you're on this one, is it? Am I? Oh, wait, this, one? We, this one. We're confused today. We're just one like, of these we ones. don't Marcus, know which camera good to see it. There you go, you actually good got it. Good to see it, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deadly. And he says he is the Batman. There you go. You're I'll the tell Batman. you something. Mark and I share a passion for Batman. Really? We do. Wow. Myself and Marcus, uh, we, 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 are, we are kindred spirits in the Batman world. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Can he draw right. Batman as, as I don't good as know. Me? I, I don't know if he can draw. I've never seen him draw. I do. I actually did a, I did a, a t-shirt for him. Uh, I used to I paint t-shirts. Uh, nice. Just for fun, and I did a t-shirt for him of Two Face. Uh, cool. Like a kind of monochromatic. Uh, image. I think I might have seen that. Did you yeah, post so. that online? I think oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 great, yeah. Great, so, uh, great. yeah, he was, he was happy with that one. Yeah. Awesome. Right. So, are you ready for the next one? Yeah, give us the next yeah. one. Deck. One next. more, one more. But uh, this one, Dave, you're like, this is going to be a tough one now. Yeah, uh, Josh, it's not, it's not pick your favorite draw. It's, um, it's uh, who drew it best. 
uh, Kozak, or I know we know Russell did it, but we'll just let you guys. Uh, Anna in, is in the chat as well. My wife saying, "Oh my gosh!" Hi. Um, yeah. Nice so she's actually a very good drawer herself. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So cool. she's probably just like really getting some critique. Embarrassed, embarrassed for me. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, thanks, Anna. Good to see you in the crowd. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but am I taking a shit or a shit ton of crystal meth? What do you want, Russell? Oh, okay. I'm going to go for crystal Dave meth. Dave left Batman. me in charge of these, so, you know. Fun. Crystal meth. I think crystal meth, that's Batman. That's a harder one. Yeah, yeah. I've got them already in my head, so that's going to be great. Right, cool. so we'll start the clock, will we? Yeah, I've already started. I literally can't draw Batman. I, I don't. Just ears, man. Just big pointy ears and a big smile, and you'll be fine. Don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. I, I'm trusting you here. Crystal Meth, Batman. <laughs> oh, so much fun. Who came up with these ideas? Is that Keith? That's Keith who came up with the actual... You, you absolute uh, ...specifics. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I love the little, uh, the, the, the music, the background music. It's very... 60s it's Batman, very isn't it? Yeah. But there's, a, there's a real kind of dubstep going on behind it, I think, is there? I should really thank the artist that I ripped it off YouTube from, but I can't remember his name. Well, I guess he'll let us know when he's copyright striking uh, us. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You, 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 I try to find the ones with, like, not a lot of viewers. If I find... We'll put them up in the, in the L description if, Dude, we, if yeah. I find them, yeah? I think I made mine Catman. Yeah, Catman. Catman's a character. I, I literally, like... Catman is arch nemesis of Batman. I'm glad there's only one more of these. <laughs> Can you see this? Adam, what I've done. <laughs> Look at that! How do you do Crystal Meth again? Just wide eyes, man. Not that I know how Chris, people are Crystal Meth. I mean, we, we all watch Breaking Bad, right? So. Oh yeah, that was we, Crystal Meth, wasn't we, it? We, yeah. That was a good show, man. That was, that was, such that a, was a great show. show. Yeah, I actually watched that probably about four times. My wife is used to that show, actually. Yeah, mine, mine yeah, as well, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. Such a good show. She, she always actually picks great shows. Because yeah. I'm a bit resistant with watching new shows. Do you know shows. what? If, if a show doesn't catch me within the first like 10 minutes, I'm done with it. And sometimes the show does take a little bit longer yeah, to get you, They're slow burners, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? They're the best shows. The slow burners can be the best shows. Yeah, There's true. one at the moment that myself and my wife are watching uh, called Succession. Oh, okay. And we're on season three at the moment. And so it's just come out. Uh, and it's so good. And again, not not. It wouldn't be if it doesn't have zombies or lasers or Batman. I won't watch it. Yeah. But this is uh, this is about uh, the, a, a billionaire family and the trials and tribulations they go through. Kind of a Trumpish kind of a thing going on. It's very oh, nice. it's very very good. Uh, very interesting. Fucking dagger time and stuff, you know. Cool. Uh, but that, yeah, if if anyone's out there stuck for. A good show to watch. That's, that's on Netflix, one. is it? Uh, no, that's on Sky. It's on uh, Now TV. Oh, okay. And uh, Brian Cox, one of my favourite actors, is a fantastic uh, actor. Cool. Right, guys, he's nearly ready. Um, I mean, I'll never be really ready, but we'll we'll wait for Russell to. <laughs> right. I'll give you a minute. Okay. Oh yeah. Cool. A minute. <laughs> I've no I have idea time what to draw I'm a cheeseburger, done. so. What oh. have I done? <laughs> I got these cheeseburgers. Those damn man. cheeseburgers, man! <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, he's already won just by even doing that. Um, yeah, was Batman ever perceived as a genie? A genie? <laughs> Gen genie in a bat cave? Because I've accidentally just drawn a genie. Well, I mean, why not? That's these cheeseburgers, man. Right. Um, I mean, I'm finished. Russell, what's going on here? I mean, like, come on, you know? Genius takes time, Kozak. Like. Right. <laughs> we're finishing Good up. Answer. <laughs> oh, yeah, finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so who are we going with first? Uh, I think you're going to go first this time. Okay, a bit of While I draw there, a bit of them. finesse here on the lines. Okay. Here. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm going to go first this time. Right. Ready, lads? So yeah. Camera, yeah? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's very good. I got these cheeseburgers. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. I love the shading you got going on there, man. That's fantastic. You ready for couple, yours, couple Dave? Of missing teeth. You know. couple, yeah, yeah. I don't think Dave will ever be ready for his. No. No, no. I definitely won't be. No, no. It's. Um, I mean, I'm. I. I don't know why I put myself through this embarrassment. <laughs> to be honest. Uh, <laughs> 
I love the bong. It's amazing. And he's a genie in a bottle because he's on meth. He thinks he's a genie. Yeah, exactly. That makes some yeah, sense. It's, it doesn't have to make sense when genie you're on Genie man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I just can't draw Batman. I have no like idea me. how to draw him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, listen, Russell, fair play to you, man. That was, uh, it was great to see you uh, uh, like, live doing drawings. Like that's <laughs> yeah. alive right in front of me. Yeah. Uh, which is fantastic. Fair play to you. I think Russell has won that one. I don't think we even need to do a vote. Um, <laughs> Ellen O'Shea says, Met Damon. That was good. Met Damon. I like that one. That was, uh, that's from, uh, from uh, Breaking Bad. There's a character in Breaking Bad who looks like Matt Damon. Oh, on towards the end, right? Yeah, the last yeah, season or two. Had, yeah. He was known on the internet as Meth Damon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've actually seen him pop up in another movie he's, again. I, yeah, I, I, I really like yeah, him. I think he's great. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm glad like, that he yeah. got a little bit more out yeah, of that. Yeah, like, I yeah. thought he was just going to be gone, then you'll never see him again. Yeah. But I have seen him yeah, in a few good a few movies. Things, yeah, 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 I don't know his name now. Well, we call him Meth Damon. Meth Damon, great. No, that's awesome, guys. Marcus says, animated series for life. So he's a big fan of the animated series. Marcus back with, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, Absolutely. and there's uh, and Archie, uh, of course, uh, cracking a good one. Crackman, <laughs> crack there we man. go. Dun, 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 That's dun, dun, it. Edwin man. having a laugh, guys. Yeah, thanks for thanks for interacting in the comments. Do keep them coming. <laughs> I think we have to congratulate Russell. Uh, give him a big congratulations in the chat for uh, doing some fantastic Thank drawing with us Thank on the much. fly, on the spot. <laughs> um, and Russell, of course, with a big uh, eighty-three percent uh, out of six 83%. votes. Uh, I got sixteen. Who's been voting for me, guys? Jesus <laughs> Christ! Some loyal fans. It's probably out my there. wife. It's probably yeah. her just feeling sorry for me. So thank you, wifey, at home uh, for, for giving me a bit of that support. So, Russell, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. There's not it's enough time to fun. chat with you. I feel like we could chat much more, but I'm we definitely really going really to yeah. yeah. pop into yeah. Fibbers yeah. and uh, just burn too. the ear yeah. off you while you're yeah. super busy and frustrated looking for a <laughs> sound issue. Um, but we're going to leave the guys. Actually, no. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell the guys uh, before we let you go? Is there anything you want to tell the camera uh, before we love you and leave you? Uh, anything just, about something coming up or anything? Uh, no, I've, I've nothing. Well, uh, look out for the a couple of VPs are going to be coming out soon. I am recording at the moment um, and just follow me on my socials and find out when the next uh, show is going to be. I haven't got anything planned for shows because I'm working so hard with Fibbers. Uh, there is a little hint there might be a return to my roots of open mic nights. Awesome. awesome. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in talks with Fibbers at the moment. And now I, nothing's on, it's, it's literally just been mentioned to the promoter and the manager and we, we kind of just had a little discussion about they're open to the idea. Great. Of maybe bringing it back for once a month, maybe on a Monday or a Sunday, we don't know yet. Awesome. But uh, to, yeah, it's to all my open mic family, who I have uh, plenty of uh, friends who, who, who I've made over the years from open mic, we will be back with something at some point. Deadly, that's great so, news. So, so yeah, stay tuned to Soundhog, uh, stay tuned to... Uh, Russell Music, Russell Hogg Music, um, and all those details will be coming up soon. Absolutely awesome, Russell. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so Thanks much so for much joining for us. Me. I'm looking Thank forward you. to seeing you um, in the gigging scene. Thank God, finally. We're yeah, back at it absolutely. again. Yeah, and yeah, uh, we're yeah. going to love you and leave you. Uh, we're going to be back uh, very shortly. We're going to leave you with two songs uh, from Russell that he pre recorded here in the studio. We're going to be back with our next guest, the wonderful Griffo from Jailbird. So don't go anywhere. And we've got a little bit of uh, goodies and surprises for you as well, courtesy of the awesome local cafe here um, in Chapel Elizabeth, at Ballyferma, uh, Bump and Grind. And their details are in the description there. So do check it out they're going to be giving away some prizes um, as well so uh, as well if you want to pop in any uh, photos of yourselves Halloweeny photos guys any like pumpkins designs that you've done any costumes Russell sent in a photo for us as well you can did, send them yeah. to the email there in the description and we're going to vote a winner and there's a couple of cool prizes as well so uh, don't go anywhere guys we're going to be back very soon Just keep breathing Slow You're saying you're down The storm Is rolling over here So breathe, just breathe you're not dead. Oh. The 
They're coming close You've got to keep moving Searching on For that safe place Our past comes back Show no fear now Not what they were A different face Don't close your eyes Don't fall asleep Hold on tight Getting heavy now As the fever crawls Over your skin You've got to stay strong You've got to keep on moving now Don't let the sickness in. Don't close your eyes Don't fall asleep Hold on tight Say oh, your feet Just breathe Just breathe As for 
force is greater than you Invade your hill Nothing left to say But you just keep on talking A living ghost A dead man walking From your demons At night they crawl The ghosts of your failures Are creeping up the wall A shadow of your former self You gave it all until there was nothing left It's taken everything you're worth And now you're living in a hell on earth You're standing in two worlds The living and the dead As forces greater than you Invade your head Nothing left to say But you just keep on talking A living ghost a dead man walking Two gay ghosts? No! They gave each other the willies! <laughs> Welcome to Indy Drive! Woohoo! Archie, you're back! Welcome back! I am back. I was on a hiatus because I had to go do some top secret things. Yeah, what was it? I can't discuss it. NDAs and all that. Wow! Well, it's great to have you back. It's been quite a while, the look. I love it. Uh, the last one was back in July. Yeah, 17th of July. Long, long time. Very long time, man. We all missed you, of course. Uh, the guys kept asking, where's Indy Drive? When is it back? When is it back? It's back! Officially! Um, absolutely delighted to be back with your brother in the car. Um, feels like you never left, mm. to be honest. Like it kind of flew by, didn't it, at that time? Yeah, well, I didn't really add much to the show, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. All right, so this is the movement by Primary Colors. Mm, never heard this song before. Yeah, are you ready for this? Mm, yes, I yeah. am. Okay, here we go. Revolution, baby. Be what you want We'll do this together safely
This is a very 90s-esque tune. I could actually see, I don't know if they have done, mm. I could see this band and Toshi. Yes, uh, same. same bill. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Bit of soulfulness to it, 90s yep. soul. Yep. Um, with that pan flute and stuff like that, the yep. shakers, all that really cool sound. Something I there. could imagine being played at full volume in the Hacienda in Manchester back oh. in the 90s. Everybody having a good time, not oh. not under the influence. No, no, None not, of at that all. Not, not, at not at all. Not at all. Never happened at a rave. No, 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 no. Banging out to this tune. Yeah, Primary banging colors. each other to this tune. Sorry. I, like, I like them. Primary colors, yeah, yeah like P them, or yeah. Y. Now, don't forget that Y in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a great first track, isn't it? Great, nice yeah. little intro. Yeah. Nice. Our, getting me limbered. Getting you getting nice and limbered loose. up. Getting you lubricated. In this traffic jam. Yeah, absolutely. On the Town Road. Yeah, yeah, a bit of traffic in rush hour now, isn't it? Yeah, it is, um, unfortunately. But yeah, welcome back. Thanks, uh, Polly, for meeting up with me again today, of course. Yeah, it's and a pleasure doing to this. be back. And if you enjoyed the episodes, slap a like on them, give them a share. Give us your feedback. That's really what we're trying to do is build yeah. an international community. community. Ah! So that was a great episode. Yeah. So hit them credits. Da, 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 da. Come in. Hello? Hello there, Mr. Kozak. I've been waiting for you. It took you longer than I thought. How'd you know my name? It's my job to know everyone in this business. Mr. Black? Is that you, is it? I found your business Shh. card on the- I know what you're here for. I have a business proposal for you. Please sit down. Please sit down. Business proposal. Yes. It's very simple. Just do keep what you're doing. Because you're doing a very good job. Bring more interesting people to the show. And what do I get in return? Everything that your heart desires. Everything that my heart desires? Indeed. The only thing that you have to do is sign this paper. And you're so. Sorry, you... and my what? No, no, don't worry about that. Just so I can sign the paper and let's keep rolling. Okay. Sorry, I got a bit of blood on that. Do not worry about us. It's just a little droplet of blood. All right, Mr. Black. There you go. Thank you very much. I just sealed that with a handshake. Sure, absolutely.
see you later. Still not doing anything. Hi, welcome back guys, welcome, welcome back. Uh, that was our very first Indie, well, not our very first, that was probably about our sixth Indie Drive. Very happy to be back with the wonderful Archie. Uh, we can see him in the comments section there. Uh, don't worry, we're absolutely fine. Uh, we got a new car uh, on lease, so uh, we got sorted out in the end there. But a uh, really great uh, pr uh, band there, Primary uh, Colours. Do check them out uh, and their recent track called The Movement, an absolute cracker of a track. And we'll be back with more Indie Drive as well in two weeks' time. Um, yeah, fantastic uh, first guest, Russell Hogg. What an absolute gentleman. It was such a pleasure uh, to chat to him again. I remember uh, fondly having some great chats with him uh, in the Shine smoking area doing gigs together. So it was just so good to have a chat with him. Could chat to him for hours. Absolutely, uh, what a gentleman. So great performances from him. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, all of that. What a wonderful uh, performer. Um, so yeah, it's been a bit of a strange week, I have to say. It's been, it's been, it's been pretty crazy. I don't know if it's with the Halloween season coming up or um, uh, whatever's been going on. As you can see with the videos that we're producing there, it's been pretty mad. Uh, first thing I want to say actually is actually, big shout out to Bump and Grind Coffee. Uh, do check them out on Instagram. It's Bump and Grind One, and uh, they've been supplying us with some absolutely fantastic coffee and treats and food. They actually do a drive-in as well. So if you're ever around Ballyferma or Chapel Lizard, uh, do check them out, drive into them, and uh, not, not into their building, but drive, you can drive through them. Um, they've got a great drive-through and they've been doing some great stuff. Um, so big shout out to them. They're gonna be giving away some prizes today, guys. So do send in some photos, send in some pumpkin carvings you've been doing, if you're into that thing. Send in some costumes, uh, if you have any prepared. And we're gonna decide on um, a couple of winners today. We've got a 50 euro voucher up for grabs. We've got some coffee and food vouchers, uh, uh, all courtesy from Bump and Grind. So do check them out, guys. Uh, and we're gonna decide our winner at the end of the show. So do stick around for that as well. Um, but yeah, absolutely been been madness week. Keith, what, what, what do you take from all of that craziness that's been going on in my life? What's the story? You're not gonna, like, the elephant in the room? Like, what the hell was that that just happened? Yeah, I don't really know. Like, I, it's been weird. Like, I bumped yeah, like, into You someone. know, there's a whole thing happening there and then you come back True. and you just start talking about all this other stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. My Who mind's the hell been is a that bit, guy? My mind's been a bit fuzzy. I don't know. I don't know. Mr. Black, and uh, I've no idea. He's meant to be a record producer. Mr. Black! Mr. Black! <laughs> And uh, yeah, he's been, he said he promised me anything that I desire um, if I signed the contract. I did sign a contract, slapped a bit of blood there by accident. Jesus, man, you don't be signing contracts like that. I know. You're meant to be part of Transmission TV, not I'm, this other lad like. I'm a little bit nervous now because like he, he wants to like eventually come on the show and he wants to like check out the artist and stuff like that. But it's really awkward now. I'm not sure if I want him because I'm getting some weird vibes off him. Uh, but I wonder if we'll ever see him again. Oh shit! Mr. Black, is that you? Hello there, Mr. Kozak. Nice to see you. Uh, yeah, nice to see you too, man. I mean, Jesus, what, what, what? Are... Doing enough? Yeah, you but... Do not remember that? I mean, I mean, I do, but like, I, I thought you were just being nice and, and just like saying that for sayings. Like, I didn't think you'd actually pop onto the show out of thin air. Um, how are you doing? How are you keeping, man? You're looking a little bit different than when we met last time. This is my proper image. Wow. You didn't get it off. I'm basically everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Wow, that's a little bit creepy. I'm not going to lie to you, but I mean, you're here anyway. So um, it's great having you on the show, um, even though it's totally unexpected. And I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling uncomfortable at all about this, actually. Um, are, you, are you a fan of music? Like, t tell us a little bit. Of, oh, like, yes, of course. Yeah. Basically, a day without music is a bad day. Really? Yeah, what, what kind of music do you like? What kind of music are you into? Everything from classic to heavy metal. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's interesting. And, and you want to come on and you're going to be deciding, like signing a couple of bands and stuff that we have on the show? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. As I told you earlier on that you have so many interesting people over here. Well, thank you that's so much. That's why I'm here, to check them out in person. Great to have you. And uh, we got a bit of a competition as well, a costume competition. So uh, do you want to decide on, on I'm who? looking forward to it. Yeah. Let's see who will be the best. 
Absolutely fantastic. Well, I'm not scared at all, guys. Uh, Mr. Black seems like an absolute gentleman. Um, uh, you know, the way he looks, um, let's just put that aside. But uh, I'm sure you're an absolute lovely man inside. Um, so I'll introduce our next guest then uh, with that. And it's the fantastic Griffo. So let me give you a little bit of a, a scoop about Griffo. Uh, he is the frontman of New Secret Weapon and newly formed lockdown project Jailbird. Uh, Griffo is no stranger to the independent music scene. He is one of the founding members of Knock and Stock and ran a variety of nights across Dublin and is recently back from a, a tour. Um, I've only gotten to know him in the past year, which is absolutely crazy that we haven't uh, met before. Uh, but every moment uh, that I've spent with Griffo and any projects that we've worked together have been an absolute pleasure. So I'm absolutely delighted uh, to have him on the show. Uh, he performed, of course, at the Transmission Music Festival, which is the first time I've actually met him. Uh, and we've done multiple live streams together and we've had some absolutely wonderful chats. Uh, what an absolute gentleman and, and true supporter of the independent music scene. Please welcome Griffo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hello, hello! Say hello to everybody! <laughs> <laughs> and there's our round of applause, our in-house audience always being... Uh, hello, hello. Is this the mic I'm supposed to be using, yes? That's the mic you're supposed to be using. Okay, cool. So great to have you. I mean, we spoke... Um, okay, Griffo's heading off. We See you later, lads. See you later, Griffo. Okay, take it easy. That was great. That's it, that's it. That was we're great, good. Crack. That's it, we're good. We're right. And he's back. Uh, but so great to see you, because we chatted, like we did the Demars Live thing, not, like at the start of the year. We had a bit of a 2D chat, which is totally different than face-to-face, -face, yes, isn't it? Indeed. Like it's, it's so nice to actually chat to you again and, and just kind of do this, because it's like we've already chatted a good few times, right? Little bits, not. I always felt like there was more we could chat about. Well, there's you know? more we can do. There's always more we can chat about, you know. I think so. And uh, you're a man of many talents. The you've world been around. Is our lobster, as they say. That's well. There you go. Uh, but you've done so much in the in the music scene over the past uh, few years. Like it's it's so impressive and it's so uh, it's it's a pleasure to actually just have gotten to know you in the last year. It's mad we only kind of just met, yeah. really, uh, just about a year ago, I'd say. Uh, but I'm learning more and more about you and what you've kind of, how much you've kind of done uh, in the music industry. You're you're such a busy man now. Like, how's how's things going for you now? Like, what what have you been up to? Yeah, things are very different for everybody now. I suppose uh, after that crazy couple of years, um, I've, it's given me such a shock that I've kind of almost jumped ship out of the production world and uh, I'm back in college now, full time, doing a degree in media production just to make avail of more time to be vocational and be mm. m m the musician I want to be, you know? So there's just over the last 15 years, the, the swords of my, you know, skill set versus my vocation have been crossing too often and it's hard to commit to one or the other. So I'm going to mm. give myself a real kind of, uh, you know, in earnest, solid time to be a musician and be vocational. Is that, is that yourself saying that to you or, or is it something that you see that people in the industry are demanding of you? Like how, um, how do you see It wouldn't that? be demanded of me, but it, it, I'm demanding it of myself for starters because mm -hmm. it's just like I'm going on 25 years in the industry now and I'm only starting to cook some music and really starting to break through into, you know, viable projects now mm -hmm. instead of traipsing around town, gigging, you know, like a lunatic for nothing all the time. Um, yeah. So, but uh, as far as um, you know, if there was ever any writing on the wall, the last couple of years has shown us that, uh, you know, for uh, as a technical production manager and as a you know festival organizer and a founding member of, a, of an independent festival, mm. it's just you don't know what's going to go on out there, and there's so many different saturation points and so many different kind of curveballs that come at you. I'm just looking for a bit of security, and yeah. you know, I think I owe it to myself and to people who are into my music or what have you, if you are out there at all into my music. <laughs> I'm um, sure a lot of people I are. <laughs> should go and commit to my music and the type of people I want to play with and the people I get to share stages with, as whether it's a session musician or with my own projects, as in, you know, New Secret Weapon are going a long time, and now this new, brand new little uh, project I have, Cooking Jailbird, is um, mm. kind of fresh and exciting. So yeah, I'm just yeah. glad to be on this side of the sound desk for, for a change. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I'd say it's a different kind of like, do you do interviews much, or is it something that you've kind of done a little no, bit? No, it's or? something I've kind of avoided like the bag for a long time. <laughs> well, thanks so much I for. I for for and I do a few ninja rolls around <laughs> the floor or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, Great. Well, we might it. do that in our fun segment. You never know. We do, we do have a dancing segment sometimes oh, as well, the odd times. So I don't know if you're into beautiful, dancing. Beautiful. Everyone knows I love me dancing. Like yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Like and so Jailbird. Yeah. Speaking mm. about the the new project, the lockdown project. Like what kind of like did did new new secret weapon come back 
together kind of before that and then you wanted to add this sort of to the list or was this something before New Secret Weapon kind of came back? Yeah, well the nature of, of being a songwriter or a, you know, someone who writes music in general, uh, you know, songs tend to follow you around like a bad smell and if you don't have the outlet or the, or the people to bounce them off, uh, you're banging trouble, like you know, mm. um, with the just the, the sheer volume of, of music. So, uh, New Secret Weapon has been cooking a long time, and that's a, like mm. a beautiful project of co-writing, uh, you know, amongst my best, absolute best friends. That were like, um, now we have a global management behind us. So, they're, the, the decision making process and the type of things that New Secret Weapon are cooking for t the, the tail end of this winter and into 2022 mm. are, uh, you know, very much a you know specific kind of agenda and very precious kind of nature to how we're going to go about executing it. Mm -hmm. Whereas I get to be prolific with Jailbird and actually just bash the material out there because like even the lockdown alone produced something like a hundred and odd demos. Like and wow. I did some modules in, in the DAW world of, of Ableton Live, I clocked that and now it's a total different universe again. So I'm writing, I'm just, I nearly have to stop writing because it's a full on identity crisis I keep building for myself, like, you know. <laughs> so, to, just, so to answer your question, Jailbird is kind of that outlet to, to stave off that kind of madness, like, you know. I mean, 100 tracks, I mean, that sounds like you've, you've, you had a lot inside you to kind of yeah. re to release out. And are, are you planning on putting anything officially on Spotify soon? Is it going to be um, a couple of albums, it sounds like? Yeah, it? well, there is. There's the bodies of work are there, and uh, the Jailbird project itself is going to manifest into three or four different kind of secular things. It's going to, you know, it's. Yeah, as I said, it's a non-genre typical kind of scenario. So, um, mm. but uh, I've um, yeah, I have two players that I'm playing with at the moment, and three I could wind as wind as well. So Chris Khan from uh, Solar Bears and Rocket Surgery and. Um, uh, Leo Dresden and he plays with the Dead Fox Sisters. He's one of my favourite drummers on the planet. He's playing mm. with me now. And, and he's fantastic. Phil Deadly, yeah, Phil Deadly from the old the Ridiculous All Stars and Hell and uh, Catch a Fire and a few different uh, outfits. Me and him can read each other like books. So it's mm. really exciting kind of project just to be able to kick out the jams and and sit into a groove. Whereas you know the, the New Secret Weapon project is kind of really high octane you know, balls to the wall, kind of wrestling songs across the finish line, whereas mm. this Jailbird thing is a little bit groovier, like, you know. Is Jailbird kind of like, you would be kind of in the, in your, what do you call your studio at home? Do you have a name for that? The Nest. The Nest, right. Yeah. I remember you, you, you said you had a name for it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which it's, so it's obviously very, your comfort zone, your comfort yeah, space, it's right? it's literally my Nest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so do you work on your own then, on the Jailbird stuff, and then produce it to the musicians? Is it different then with, New Secret Weapon, where you kind of collaborate more? How does that Yeah, well, the, at the very start, it was a similar thing. I was just lobbing loads of material at, at the two boys from New Secret Weapon, and then we became, a, a, you know, a, a cohesive three piece, and now them are co writing. So, you know, we're very much robust on the, we all bring a lot to the table, whereas, uh, you know, Jailbird is just a, a total brainchild of mine, and mm. you know, I'll, I'll be a. Uh, you know, there's a couple of different collaborators involved. Like there's um, the, the particular uh, manifestation of it at the moment is kind of alternative rock, folk, jazzy kind of influences. Mm -hmm. You can hear the, the type of influences that are happening there. But the, and I've a couple of videos that are nearly being finished there, and done a couple of shows recently with Kieran Black. Thankfully, he, he got us booked in for the, the Grand Social yeah, for a play awesome. We 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 smoked a, a, a sold out show there, and then Christina Perfect. Quill. Uh, we opened for Mick Pyro just there as with the Jailbird Ensemble. Yeah, and on that was Friday another cracking there, show. So basically, yeah, on Friday just yeah, gone. So really. we're kind of doing a, like a few shows, a couple of videos, a body of work, and then onto the next manifestation of Jailbird, but with the same outfit. So the next yeah. one is kind of more trip hoppy, kind of. R&B kind of orientated okay. uh, and I'm working with Conan Wynn from Contour on that and the same guys Phil and Phil Deadly and, and, and Chris Conn you know. Awesome, it sounds like you're travelling through kind of like yeah. there's no genre limit then. Exactly and it just staves off the kind of identity crisis of having to like where does this music fit so we're kind of there's just different cycles of how it's going to manifest is yeah. kind of the way you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean but I'm, I'm, I'm late into 2022. To yeah because I mean I've, 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 ticket, like. I've listened to, to some of your stuff I, mostly through live streams actually really mm. the, the Jailbird stuff of course mm. obviously New Secret Weapon as well um, uh, you have stuff up on Spotify already, right? For, well, for the New Spotify has been, come, has been taken down. Uh, we're okay. just, we've, there's things cooking with the management there. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't know if I'm going to go near Spotify with Jailbird. I'm not really into them having, I'm not going to get political here around, but just mm. to have that such a drastic monopoly on playback uh, is, is half the reason the music industry is, is in such disarray for mm. any young starting artist. So what, just, what would you li like to do? Like what route well, would you go? The Bandcamp and the monetize, monet monetary system that's been yeah. kind of applied to uh, SoundCloud is a little bit more artist bias and uh, mm -hmm. it's you know you need to do your research before you go uh, 
signing off. Like mm-hmm. people are just diving into further into the popularity contest of Spotify. Like uh, so, yeah. to look attractive to a booker or to an agent of any sort or to a label, you need to get all these millions of streams to look attractive in the first place for them to work with you. Like so, yeah, it's like all yeah. your work, you're doing all the work anyway, and then you're doing all the work, and then you're doing all the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, true. So like, what what's the crack? Like you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of arse ways to gas me. Like so. Yeah, it's interesting. So speaking to Russell about you know how it's a lot easier now to upload stuff, you know, and it, it can be like a. A, a sort of a, a positive and a, and a negative obviously to it for the fact that it's accessible but now it's being relied on I mean it would work if they paid more right this obviously that it. would be great if yeah, there's more yeah. money in it for musicians obviously for exactly, artists yeah, yeah, yeah. which it's not like but Bandcamp of course yeah has been great to, to musicians with the Friday uh, Bandcamp Fridays they do every month yeah, as well man, such a, like, I mean I wouldn't I, I can only imagine how much skin or a lack thereof off their nose it was to be able to do that but it's yeah. just a, a gesture like that from a you know such a large institution is just shows they give a shit like yeah, excuse yeah. the French but it's like you know Spotify trying to do that Spotify for artists thing is a little little too late and it's still the criteria to get in amongst that you're still the, the, the margins are ridiculous like yeah know? yeah it's it's a, it's an outright like kind of problem if you yeah. ask me like yeah yeah it's a shame yeah. that like you know and going back to your saying like if people people that you don't know or sorry bookers that you don't know to try and convince them it's not quality like first and foremost to look for it's the followers it's yeah. the potential well this is it like I mean uh, years and years before like the the internet had a grip on the affirmation of whether the bands were worth their salt or not uh, you know you'd be either a demo or you'd kind of have to filter them through a gig to see what they brought to the stage mm. and knocking stock in over the 15 years we had a very unique kind of selection process and we, you know, not only are the submissions being filtered through a, a, a band of music lovers, down, and then the selection process starts from there, but we'd also invite them in to do a filter gig and see what they actually bring to the stage, because a lot of bands can do cook up some really hot recordings, and then they come to the stage and there's no energy and they're just a bag of cats and it's like, what's going on here, you know? <laughs> so like, I mean, there's loads of them bands that are really good. It's like Facebook or any kind of social media front, you can mm. very good recordings and then you just don't have it going on when it yeah. comes to what you do on the stage you know I, I it's like guess, great yeah. at Facebook show at people you know that's so. it yeah yeah because you can you can buy likes now and stuff like that you it's, know what I mean so you just exactly don't know it, anymore like yeah. and obviously on a recording you can a producer can make you sound really good and now with the with DAWs and everything like that yeah. you can create a whole band out of thin air and yeah. then give the illusion that well, that's that it one's like a good it's, it's nice to be able to just get people up on the stage and mm. what happened over the last two years and now the reset and the modeling of people's like all the bars and all the trendy little kind of small bars that had small little PAs mm. and all the garage gig scene is completely decimated again for like not for the first time mm. and uh, f- for that to be kind of ushered back in is going to take a while so the opportunities for bands to be you know breaking out of the bedroom is um, they're slipping and fewer and further between you know and yeah. that's where it, where the magic is at is those garage gigs where like a, a gig is worth a thousand rehearsals to these kids and they're just not a, they're just not around anymore yeah yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. someone's gonna have to do something about that like yeah hopefully and, and I, I know like there was a bit of a positive note a bit of a silver line into the pandemic of course where like we saw how little music and the entertainment industry was appreciated with obviously the actions and restrictions and and lack of sort of care for the industry for yeah. so many months really oh, until yeah. eventually there was a bit of funding put in yeah, but yeah. still like you were saying like a little bit too late as well and, and yeah, perhaps it was amazing. it's not enough like, it was amazing yeah. to see the, the, the nature of who, who uh, like the, the governing bodies and the, the mm. you know so called powers that be kind of is, uh, introducing these uh, you know patchwork quilt of solutions to problems that were screaming at us for years and years before that mm. like I mean the Irish arts are just the lack of support is outrageous and compared to our neighbours over in the UK or the Netherlands or anywhere else for that matter. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's nice to see uh, what what really shone to me was the looks of yourself or the people that really had their neck out while there was the shit was hit the fan and there was nothing going on and people were still kind of pushing it, the boat out to try and make things happen for these young artists as well as like every other touring artist that couldn't go anywhere there was still the likes of yourself and even myself doing that few gigs like that yeah. during the middle of the lockdown trying to provide these platforms if in the face of adversity and you know whether it's worth it or not doesn't matter because we're if we're in it for the money yeah we wouldn't be sitting here doing this like 100 percent, 100 percent. so guys um we're gonna leave you with a tune that you pre-recorded i believe okay, it's cool, bo's yeah. song is the first one oh, right. uh, we're gonna be playing yeah. and cool. um we're gonna have a q a straight afterwards so drop in any questions awesome. into the comment section if you want to ask griffo any uh, of his secrets or anything like that any questions yeah griffo said at the start of the show he's like yeah uh, just ask me absolutely anything. I don't care. 
So um, you did say yeah, that, right? I did, yeah. I, did I, thought, I actually right. thought I was supposed to do that bit in the nip as well. But we you, were, yeah, you are, but I don't know. Will we scrap that it's part? It's the watershed. It? it depends on... The I think we're all right. <laughs> yeah, no, you're so, okay. I, cleaned, I, have to, I, could, I have to ring the mother with Charles see if Charlie Rose is in bed. Are you in bed yet, Charlie Rose? I'm, I'm, look, it's after nine o'clock now, is it? Or it's half eight. I think you would be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll, just, we'll, we'll figure that out during the uh, performance, which way we're going to go with it. Uh, either way is good for me. Uh, but yeah, get your questions That's ready up there as well, guys. And uh, we're going to be back as well with a little bit of a fun segment with Griffo as well. So don't go anywhere. This is Bo's song.
And welcome back, guys. Uh, that was uh, the awesome Jailbird and their song, Bo's Song. Uh, don't forget as well that all the details to Jailbird's uh, page is in the description. So if you're not following them now, follow them right now. Click on that link. It's not going to jump you out of the, um, the stream if you're on your PC or laptop. And uh, give them a follow and stay uh, up yeah. to date. Yeah, to all, all right. the stuff, all the exciting stuff that's happening in in Griffo's life and in, in 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 Jailbird's life. The the whole project mm. is absolutely awesome. It's so great. exciting that we're sweating blue bullets of <laughs> yeah, you were heads saying, there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You see the heads on us after doing a gig the night before. Like Jesus, like dribbling and sweat there. Well, you're busy now, like isn't mm. it? Like everything's kind of the floodgates have opened. Mm. So that's why you're a bit wet, I guess you could say. I'm a bit wet. Yeah, you're a bit wet, like sexy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? Yeah, so we didn't go for the nip option because uh, didn't it, have time. Been, it, we didn't have time. Yeah, yeah. You should have played a longer song. Griff. We should have done a longer version. Yeah. Uh, so what's we, the crack? What happens now? Well, we got. I don't know. We can just chillax. You know, just yeah. have a, any points. Any yeah, cans nothing. Or, no, we, we need somebody to get stole the, my only can of Heineken that I brought. Your production crew were a lot of crackheads. Uh, we need to get a little mini bar or something set up here. Right. None of us, not many of us, drink now. I'm off the gargle now a bit. Um, enjoyed myself a little bit too much, but Q and A time. Um, we've got a couple of questions in. Um, Paul Archie says the mix on those drums, uh, enjoying it. Uh, we've got XS and yeah, I think that's Ricardo. Big up Jaguar, nice one, dude. Uh, he's asking any tips for new artists trying to make their way in music, Griffo. Um, yeah, uh, like I don't know, depending on the. Um, where you're at and who you're with, if you're a solo kind of guy trying to get some bands together or if you're just starting out writing songs, just, just don't compromise on your style and um, try and be as true to yourself as you possibly can and kick in as many doors as you can trying to get those gigs and get to know some promoters. Go out to gigs, meet people at gigs, support your friends, bands, simple things man, very simple things that everyone can do. Yeah, it's, there's nothing like a bit of old school networking, isn't it? Like actually physically going out instead. Like I know you can do that now on social media and message people. Yeah, and it's it not the same. It's not the same, isn't it? Because no. you can build, when you meet someone in person, like you yeah. build already a relationship with them. Yeah. And if also it, if the all amount, goes well. The, the, amount of, the amount of spiel that people type to you that is never followed up on. Like it's, it's very True. easy just to type like and just say, yeah, I'll be there. Or this is what we should do. Maybe we should do. Let's make yeah. a band, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. but like if you go out and actually make the effort and get amongst your peers and you know, support them and have the crack with them out there, like, you know. Absolutely. Like when I was booking for Drop Dead twice last year before the Iron Curtain came down, I, I realised how laborious it was because I had to c try and get out amongst the going to see the Thumper lads and going to these bands and I was going, geez, I used to have to do this all the time, and except yeah. I think I enjoyed it back then because this is shit now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, it was, I was all just having like... to drag myself out to gigs, but then as soon yeah. as you're out at them, like, you realise, you remember why you love it and you're amongst yeah. your own, you're amongst the people that love the same things you do. And, yeah, yeah. You know, that's just like for, yeah, for new bands starting out, just get amongst other bands. That's, you know, probably the most simple, be best bit of advice. Great advice. Uh, do you have any, like, do you have like a top five of like independent artists that you like or any art? Or it doesn't have to be independent, I guess, just like, and maybe it's not right to say top five. Is there any kind of like that you kind of tickle your fancy right now, maybe? Um, this, yeah, there's just so many, uh, mm. like, I don't know, uh, I was mixing uh, like some R&B act the other night at front of house job I did for a unique UNQ, absolutely outrageous artist. Uh, Rob DeBoer's doing a super slick kind of uh, funky stuff as well. Um, but on the heavier end of things, like of, you know, The Last Vinci, uh, they're, those guys are about to start breaking waves now. Yeah, um, they're releasing by, an by album. Curious. They released an album today, or they do, they're just. I think they just dropped up some sort of an EP yeah, or something. Yeah. Or I think uh, Rebecca's taken them on. Yeah, management, she's so fair play to her. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, on the folk rock scene, Dove Lee is making waves. He's doing great stuff. Um, I've got, uh, you know, I've got obviously an affiliation with some serious outfits there, like the Panic Attacks. My one of my closest pals, Rob Walsh. Uh, um, he's writing the most visceral, uh, hard-hitting material that's uh, speaking to people out there uh, at the moment. He's, he just won't beat them for honesty. Um, Reentrench and and Scan um, Afghanistan are the Deaf Brothers. They're producing most of the best stuff to come out of Ireland right now, uh, down from the Meadow Studios. Uh, girl band are, are flying the flag uh, across the globe, uh, basically for Irish noise bands. Um, Tumper or Tumper just on the back end of a UK tour. Mm. Uh, Bitch Falcon are just wrapping it up, sadly. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, that. but there's some serious uh, headbangers out there still doing their thing. It's just a, a shame that there's kind of, you know, pockets of them uh, f f rather than the kind of collectives that were existing eight to ten years ago. You know, do you think it'll come back these kind of collectives? 
Um, they will, but they'll never be the same again. It's funny, my thesis and dissertation, or whatever way you word that, uh, mm. is on the rise and fall of, of collectives and why it'll never be the same again. So uh, mm. we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll well, see I, I got to read that, I guess, to, to, to catch <laughs> to up on that. First. Yeah. Well, well, well Knock and Stock, and I guess, started off as a, a collective, right? Yeah. Uh, how, how, how did that kind of begin? How, how, how do you set up, get a group of people together and do it? Well, it was these? like the likes of um, the, myself and Peter Kyo and Ender the and O'Reilly were at a little band called The Mongrels, so I was playing drums for them at the time and uh, we were just hockeying around doing uh, three-piece gigs and um, we were, uh, like Peter, we used to play up in Bally Knocking In and Peter was literally looking around off at the Lake View going, we should stick a gig together up here. We were already filtering, you know, maybe 20 bands uh, once a week at this absolute pandemonious open mic carnival type thing called the, the Primal Jelly Social Club that myself and Peter set up. And that kind of filtered our all year round kind of calendar to be able to, you know, the, the accumulation of that was knock and stocking, like, you know, that and merging with Bo Owens' crew, with the human music, and a couple of other smaller collectives kind of, we kind of merged together, and the fruits of that were the first ever knock and stocking out. And then, yeah. you know, just kind of went turbo from that point out, like, you know. It's mad how, like, how many years did knock and stocking? Uh, 2007 start? was the first one, like, you know, so Dang. we've had a couple of fallow years, but it's always been for the sake of, uh, you know, being able to provide the platform for the bands that weren't getting in the look in anywhere else, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, fair play to you, man, so, yeah. Bit of a crusade, I, I, like yourself, like, you know, the transmission. I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then you had obviously yeah, dropped it twice as well. So you did your own uh, live that, stream. Yeah, I was just well. trying to. It's not the same, of no, course. The live stream stuff. Of course, it was yeah. Great yeah. To have something well, to we do, had the course. dates on the calendar before yeah. the, the, the 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 curtain came down again, but. Yeah. Uh, the venue thing, I was trying to kind of re-establish that type of uh, garage gig scene where people just know that they can come there and do, and, and do their thing. Um, kind of Sweeney's-esque kind of vibe, you know, Sweeney's mm. Mark II was the kind of stamp, uh, Such a shame. a better it's, description it's close, to it's, put on it. Yeah. yeah. It's, what venue now do you kind of... Do you go to which one do you like? In well, there, what's kind of your there isn't. There's this, that's still to rear its beautiful head again. Is where mm. these kind of uh, nights and who, what type of uh, owners and promoters are going to be fostering these uh, breakthrough nights and the garage gigs? Because that's mm. the lifeblood of, of it all, really. Because then there's a gap between where the tickets are worth, what they're worth, and where the bands are, who's hot and who's not. Mm. The, that gap can only be reduced by garage gigs, like and the uh, free in jobbies, like and they're just mm. everybody shitting bricks out there, whether like uh, trying to put bums on seats isn't really very attractive after the couple of years we've had, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, but it'll change. It'll change. That's great. No, that's. I'm glad you're positive about it. Oh, which yeah, is great. Be, like yeah. you can see, especially someone that has seen it through the years, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you can see sort of the the ups and downs, I guess, the peaks and troughs and everything. So it's great that we can come out of a lockdown and still sort of see that. Oh. Uh, we can acknowledge, the, the, I guess more of the problems were acknowledged because of the lockdown, right? Yeah, so, which yeah. is great, we're, which we touched totally. on earlier. So that's great, There's hopefully that will keep going and we can learn yeah. from sort of... Yeah, and it leveled the playing field as well for all the big mm. boys out there that were kind of, you know, whitewashing the place with big acts and big tickets and, you know, all the touring bands that couldn't tour and there was a lot of hasty decisions being made and then the LCSS money came in and just kind of not only muddied the waters but leveled the playing field a little bit for some of the smaller independent bookers and, and promoters to kind of mm. get out and amongst to do their things. So I'm hoping with these restrictions lifting now that we're going to have a nice busy winter ahead of us. And yeah, please God, man. So please God. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Jailbird live in an audience this time, not me behind the camera filming you, yeah, which yeah. was a pleasure, of course, and an honour yeah, to do yeah. so. But I'd love to do it with, you know, my mates around me. Yeah, and, I, uh, I, just, I, just I'm reluctant. I, can't, I had there's a couple of gigs that are on the horizon, but I'm reluctant to announce the dates on them now by way of plugging them. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just early days. Is. But there is a, a new sequel weapon show on the 27th of November um, in the Button Factory. The tickets are flying out for that, so you should try Excellent. and get that. That's going to be an absolute ruckus. We've got um, Waste Fellow, who's an amazing pioneer on the, on the dance uh, music scene and the, the electronic music scene. His new outfit, Really Good Time, are yeah, they're, they're just merging now onto the scene and kicking doors in. Hopefully, they're going to be on that bill with us. If you want to see them, they're playing with Thumper in the Workman's new venue, I think, on Halloween night. If you're not doing that, lads, that's probably the hottest ticket that weekend. Awesome. Uh, really good time in Thumper. Um, yeah. That's great. That's great. Uh, that concludes our QA. Um, couple of questions. We've got, we've got a couple of questions in. So, uh, I think we will. Um, yeah, I think we'll move on to our next segment, I guess. Uh oh, what's this again? 
What is going on? Who's this dude? Uh, you never this, get your hands around that this, with those. This is houses. Mr. Black, Griffo. Oh yeah, you see him um, earlier in the jacks. Did you see him in the jacks? He's been using the jacks in here, has he? No, um, he wasn't uh, using the jacks. So Mr. Black, what can, I, what can I do for you? I see you have a guitar in your hand. Now it's time for a bit of fun. And okay. my amusement, I want you to, to have guitar battle. A guitar oh, battle? Yes. Griffo, what do you think about that? I don't know, man, I'm a drummer. You're a drummer. I'm a guitar. I'm not, I'm not a guitarist. That's, uh, listen, if it's if it's in the name, look, it's in the name of a bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind doing that. So, will I go first or? Well, how does yes. this work? Okay, so it's just a bit of fun, anyway, isn't yes. it? Okay. It is fun. So, is there any consequences? Remember, like, do I have yes. to be afraid? No. Nope. Just the loser will get a thousand lashes in hell. What? That's it. A thousand yeah. lashes. Oh, I'm gonna throw this. I'm gonna throw this gig. I haven't got a good thousand lashes in a long time. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not up for the thousand lashes. How does this work? Um, what happens? What so happens? I think I'll go first. What, first what? Like I'm just gonna play, and then you're gonna play after. Fuck's sake, man. Okay. All right. Uh, so it's been a while. I don't think anyone's ever seen me with a guitar in my hand, by the way. Um, so I think Keith was gonna play a couple of backing tracks. Oh, uh, what? And well, I, I was gonna just play a few drums there, you know, because I didn't want to put you out by uh, putting stuff in that. You'd have to know what key to play, you know, you know? So, just will, will, I just, will we just take turns, like, on the same track, since Griffo's already up with his guitar? Do we you have that prepared? If you wanted. Will we just do that? We just take I turns? No, man, let's just, 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 just throw it out there, Keith. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, yeah, well... So, I think I'll go first, and okay. then, Griffo, do you want to play after me? Okay. Right? This is going to be so bad, man. I can't play guitar. Stop lying. I can't. Go on then. I can't. Go on and don't do I'm it. so nervous now. I was <laughs> glad earlier. <laughs> yeah. You like that? Yeah, can we get some more, uh, more Kozak in the monitors, please? Right? Check this out, Griffo. All right. <coughs> Give us some more of that backing track. All right, let's get Griffo in. That was pretty pathetic. All right, here we go, Griffo. <laughs> Next! Keith, on the ball. <laughs> like my solos there. They're a little bit sloppy. Not bad, not bad, Dave. You're getting in there with the solos, huh? This yeah. is Morto. Yeah, yeah, he's Morto, yeah. Well, I'll, I have a few more there. I have a smile on my face, but it's You're covering the, my like, mortification. You're two-step fucking Rootsy Blues thing, whatever that was. Like. You like that? I learned that today. Oh. Right, what do I have to do? You just did it. Right, oh, brilliant. So we were jamming, man. Yeah, that was bad, wasn't we're it? Jamming. That was actually pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to do a poll up there, guys, so you can decide who is playing better. Uh, is that even a question? But uh, will we do one more? And uh, Josh, if you want to put that... <laughs> Who's going first, though? Well, I can just go first again, because I don't know anything. Whoa, we're all, so we're Griffo can just like, what is this? Harry. Go on. This time, man, it's just too scratchy bad. Like. <laughs> right, so, where's my one? 
Can we get a zoom in on this guy over here as well, please? We saw, we saw not impressed, like. Do you like that? Guitar. That's easy, man. Check this. <laughs> oh, dude. Ah, <laughs> uh, Dave. Do you know Dave. what's funny? We were meant to do like, uh oh, here, but let's just play a backing track of somebody playing guitar bad. And I was like, no, I just play guitar normally. Yeah, 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 that'll do. Yeah. And that was it. Like, all right, I think we're done. Uh, Griffo, fair play to you for. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate that. That was great crack. Our very first guitar battle on uh, Transmission TV. You've been dominated. I, yeah, I have been Pay actually dominated. Respects. But uh, that was just a bit of fun, right? Indeed. Now now I'll, uh, I'll take the lashes out of their gown. Like. Exactly. Yeah, I'll take the lashes. That, that, that was a joke, obviously, yeah. right? No. It's time for your payment. Oh, can I give them or can I take them or what's going on? What you mean? It's his turn. He's going. Uh, you swap back into our normal position. <coughs> and we're back. Uh, thanks uh, so much, Griffo, for uh, doing a bit Delicious. of that. Did you enjoy that, did you? No, it was terrifying. I, I hate playing guitar. <laughs> Do you? I'm fucking sick of playing you guitar. You looked like you were in your element. And my back's a little sore. Um, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, Look, bit I of crack. I got Shredder's block. That's what it's Did called. you, yeah? Yeah, it's just like, Ugh. Man, that was, that was unbelievable. Like, that was fantastic. I mean, I mean, you were comparing it to me, so I guess that's not yeah, yeah, saying too much yeah, like that. Yeah. Thanks very much for that. I probably should have prepared something, uh, mm, to be right. honest. But listen, Griffo, it's been an absolute pleasure yeah. to have you, brother. Uh, like so good to see you in the flesh. Thanks, um, yeah. Again, like I could see definitely a little bit more of you. Uh, mm. I definitely want to see you, uh, of course, live. I'm dying to see New Secret Weapon live and Jailbird. Really, really can't wait. I'm going to try and make that Button Factory gig in November, I'll, of course. I'll roll out the guest list for all y'all. All, all the dude, like that's yeah, the Jesus. Transmission TV uh, plus 20. That's, that would be an absolute honour, dude. You don't even have to do that. Like, we, we'd be happy to support you guys. Um, really, really want to see the two bands uh, live. Is there anything you want to tell our audience before we love you and leave you? And you can tell them to this camera um, over here. Yeah, just look out for... Uh, I think I'm opening for Andy on the 12th of November. I'm doing a, nice. a stripped back uh, two-piece jailbird set with myself and Jane. Pompilius on the on the fiddle, uh, so that'll be an acoustic kind of jailbird setting. Uh, beyond that, uh, I've got uh, a beautiful animated video dropping for one of the songs. Des Garvey uh, spent months and months doing an animated video accompanying one of my songs. It's going to be on Bandcamp and on YouTube. It's going to get its premiere through some one of the outlets. I'm not sure whether it be Hot Press or Golden Pleck. Um, there's actually two bodies or two videos for this current body of, uh, of work and it'll be dropping like this side of Christmas uh, to get the stocking fillers in for the few bob. Nice. And uh, beyond that, uh, New Secret Weapon, 27th of November. Um, yeah, and then it's awesome. 2022, isn't it, mate? Loads of stuff happening, guys. And of course, once again, uh, Griffo's information is in the description there. So do check it out, uh, Jailbird's Facebook page. And uh, so much, so much stuff happening in Griffo's life right now. So I'm absolutely delighted uh, to hear that, Griffo. Uh, we've got two more tracks uh, from Jailbird to play. Can't wait to play them right now. Cool. And uh, don't go anywhere. Head, don't you? Yeah, yeah, well, look, I mean, it, it, it adds to the reality, uh, yeah. which is absolutely fantastic. Chris, like, woke up to find his car clamped in the middle of town. I remember that, man, yeah. Across and, you know, between being still steaming drunk and sweating <laughs> the devil's whatever out of me, like you can see it clearly on the video takes there, it's like sweating bullets. So. You played an absolute stormer, yeah, I have to say, man. So Thanks, it was an absolute guys. pleasure recording you and uh, it, was just, it was just a pr privilege to have you in this studio to much. record you, brother. So uh, much appreciated, Thanks, dude. really do. Um, so guys, don't go anywhere as well. Of course, we're going to decide on our winner as well. We've got like a 50 euro voucher to give away. We've got some coffee vouchers and stuff, courtesy of the wonderful Bump and Grind. Uh, do check them out as well on Instagram. Uh, give them a follow. Hop on over to their page right now and give them a follow and uh, comment on their 
first picture, guys, and that will put you as well in a draw uh, to win some delicious uh, coffee and sandwiches, courtesy of them here. They're literally just a stone's throw away from us. Um, but we're going to leave you now. Uh, we're going to love and leave uh, Griffo, and uh, we're going to leave you with two more tracks that he recorded here in uh, Tsuma Tsunami Studios. Uh, <laughs> Tsunami Studios. <laughs> See you in a few. <laughs>
Welcome back, guys. That was the awesome Jailbird uh, in the studio here uh, with us. Uh, of course, we're going to be releasing all of the tracks uh, that were performed uh, separately next week uh, so you guys can enjoy them uh, on their own, of course, as well. And uh, we've got some secret tracks recorded uh, during uh, the time that Russell, uh, Hogg and uh, Jailbird spent here in the studio. So you can avail of those tracks by subscribing to our Patreon. Um, the tiers start at €3. Euros and uh, you get loads of exclusive content, backstage footage, and uh, of course those wonderful secret songs that the musicians have uh, so kindly um, contributed uh, to our Patreon. So do consider uh, joining that if you'd like, and it supports uh, what's going on in here basically, uh, the studio costs and all that kind of stuff, so um, your support will be absolutely fantastic guys. Of course we want to keep going with this. Uh, so I really hope you enjoyed um, the show today. We had a lot of great stuff happening, there was a lot of kind of production stuff in this one, so really hope you guys enjoyed it. Keto, how are you doing out there? Grand, man? yeah. I feel like I've been talking ages. M misery. Yeah. But it is Halloween, you know. Well, uh, I, I think uh, th this is the problem with democracy. I think you won that, you know. So I think uh, Griffo has to get lashed out of it there now. Well, I got those lashes for some reason, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going so on. So the demo the democracy doesn't matter, that's what we're saying. No, definitely not. <laughs> I, think we, I think we, like we were going back to, it's, it's, it is really the, uh, the, the artist uh, skill themselves that, that have to be you know like booked for gigs and we're stuff kind of like with that. you there yeah yeah but we, uh, we're just for real on this show absolutely Democracy doesn't matter we pretend it matters dave gets slashed out of it yeah you know and it wasn't that bad <laughs> it wasn't that bad i love how we're getting a little bit political today it's kind of nice i kind of like it yeah, you know, yeah. that's kind of what the show should be about do you like my mark zuckerberg uh, cup by no, the way that's my mug actually but yeah <laughs> yeah good friend of mine um, oh by the way we actually got some of uh, the uh, pictures in from the uh, great, great. So we have, um, uh, I think we've got uh, somebody here in the studio with me again. You still uh, have him here? Yeah, he, uh, he's, I don't know, like, what well, he's... Uh... <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Black. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. Thanks for those lashes. Oh, I really, hope you enjoy them. They really woke me up. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of back pain there still, but I think you might have fixed uh, my sciatica, actually. I think I had a few see? lumps on my back. Yeah. You're not as bad as you seem. Things appear different, I guess, you know? Indeed. I shouldn't be quick to judge. Um, so you're gonna be um, 
helping us out with the costume competition today, I think. Exactly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. So, Keto, do you have some... Uh, I think it's too late now to submit stuff, guys, but if you want to take part in... We've got a couple of giveaways, right? So, basically, we've got our costume uh, submission giveaway. Uh, we've also got a giveaway for if you head over to Bump and Grind 1 right now on Instagram, uh, follow them, like their first post, and comment uh, in on their most latest post, which will be uh, promoting this show, and just just comment whatever you want, whatever you are feeling, and we'll decide a winner through that. And um, I think we might have time for one more uh, competition as well, uh, which will involve a riddle delivered by Mr. Black himself. Two. Two riddles. Two riddles, and it'll be quickest answer uh, will uh, win. So, will we do our costume competition first, Keto? Do you yeah, have well, I'll just up? I'll just put them up on screen there for you. All right. So, Mr. Black, um, you he's will a, be actually deciding. he's up there on the he's up there on this, so I can put them up on this for you. Where is it? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. There we go. Absolutely. First one's from Ooh, that guy. Be a magician. Fantastic. Yeah, never seen that guy before. Uh, that's Harry Potter, is it? I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Okay, it's a Gryffindor. Uh, I think he's. I think Hamlet. he's a Belvedere College. Is that oh, is that or Belvo? Hufflepuff? Ah, very good. Is that Hufflepuff? Is it? Gryffindor or Hufflepuff? One yeah, of those. Yeah, one of those good ones. Anyway. Yeah. It's not the green one. You like the green one? Which one would you be in, Mr. Black? Well, of course, Slytherin. Slytherin, yeah. You do look a bit like a Slytherin kind of guy. Yeah, well, we got another one here. Okay, we got another one. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. This man will keep sending in more. Yeah. I think more? that's for the night after after the Halloween. That's after the Halloween, yeah. is it? Okay, okay, that's a late night one. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, I, right. I enjoy that one. Yeah. And we actually okay. had one more as well. Okay, here we go. Awesome, wow. Oh, yeah. Someone is trying to be one of my minions of darkness. Yeah, I thought that was Thanus. That's a Hellboy. That's Hellboy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A fantastic. There we go. Archie Potter. Yeah, that's a good one there. Um, so great. What What do you think? Who uh, is, is that? All we have is it? That's all we have. Guys, what's going on? Where, why didn't you send in more photos? What's happening here? Where's my pumpkins at? Do people still carve pumpkins? I don't know, man. Maybe you should. Uh, maybe you should promote it better. <laughs> True. Thank you, Keto. Thanks. You know, I only put ten uh, on the will. second event. For feck's sake. All right, so Mr. Black, what do you think now? Who's who, who takes it away? Of course, the one who dressed as my minion of darkness. Fantastic, so we have the wonderful guest of ours, Russell Hogg, that gets a prize today, courtesy of Bump and Grind. Uh, big shout out to Russell, uh, of course, for popping onto the show and submitting. Uh, <laughs> Being the only serious submission where he's not actually photoshopped. Um, he was so, the one serious today. He was the he was the one taking it serious. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to give away as well uh, something else, and it will be uh, a riddle. So, Mr. Black, would you like to um, tell us your two riddles? And the fastest ones in the comment section, guys. The fastest one in the comment section. I love how he looks. Uh, will. Um, we'll take it. We'll take it. So, Mr. Black, work away. So, first one. In which month most of the kids are born? Okay, so in which month are most of the kids born? Guys, yes. get your answers in there quickly into the comment section and we will decide on who takes the gold. Well, not the gold, the, the prize that's uh, with our collaborators, Bump and Grind. So throw them into the comment section. If there's anybody out there, let's see if um, who we have still online. And what's what's your other one as well, then, um, Mr. Black? So the other one is what's in front of you, but you can't see it. Okay, people are probably googling now. Uh, Archie says all of them. No, that's, that's wrong. That's a no. That's a no from Mr. Black. Okay. Um, if anybody else wants to put in their answer, uh, which month are babies mostly? Most of the babies Most are born. of the babies born in. And what's the other one? What's in front of you? But you can't see it. What's always in front it. of you, but you can't see it. Okay, 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 okay. If we don't get an answer in the next maybe one, 30 seconds, I think we'll we'll move on, but we can actually we'll take in some answers after the show as well. So that's all right. We still give away something as well, guys. So don't worry. Uh, P Paul Archibald saying, "Is Mr. Black a conspiracy demon wrapping them horns in tinfoil?" What? 
I don't think that's tinfoil. No? No, they're real horns, man. Yeah, they just look a little bit shiny in the light. But um, people are using tinfoil to protect themselves from 5G now. Yeah. And they used to protect themselves from aliens. Yeah. I'm not from there. I'm from there. You're from beneath. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe in aliens, Mr. Black? No. No? All we have is this realm. It's all just this realm. And what's it like living in hell? Is it grand? Like? It's warm. Is it? Yeah. Would you recommend it? For people who love Spain? Yes. Really? Nice. Okay, cool. Is there many interesting people in hell? Oh, oh there is a lot of them. Yeah. But probably you wouldn't like to meet them. Really? They're not as nice as I am. Nice as I am. You seem really nice, actually. I have to say. Uh, Enya Quinn says, the future for one of your riddles. That's correct for the second one. Enya Quinn. Bravo. Fantastic. Fair play to Enya Quinn for getting one of our prize giveaways this evening, courtesy of Bump and Grind. Do give them a follow, guys. Uh, they're absolutely awesome, by the way. Um, they do some really fantastic coffee. They do some great sandwiches, lovely toasties, like toasties you've never had before. Seriously, they're like so unique um, and delicious. And they've got some great uh, pastries as well. Really top quality stuff. Uh, so I do recommend you check them out. And uh, they do a drive through so you don't even have to leave the car. You don't even have to leave the car, guys. You just feckin' drive through. It's unbelievable. And they're absolutely so sound, they, they make a perfect coffee. Uh, so Enya Quinn, congratulations, and Russell Hogg. A Anna says June. No, that's wrong. Paul says shiny like a Pokemon card. Okay, that's in, in reference to the horns. Um, and of course, Archie did the, the, the Pokemon sketch with us uh, back in the day. We know Archie has a load of Pokemon cards. Okay, guys, that's great. Listen, I think we will uh, start finishing up. Before we leave, of course, um, I... We still need to reveal the answer for the first riddle. Oh, sorry, yeah, okay, sorry, Mr. Black, Jesus. Okay, my bad, yeah. So that's basically a really simple answer. So what's the question again? Sorry, so the riddle is... In which month most of the kids are born? Okay. Ninth. The ninth month. Ah, oh, there you go, Mr. Black. You and your riddles, huh? There you go. I never would have known that. Um, so yeah, hard luck on whoever didn't get that. Um, Anna says, eyes. Okay, shiny eyes. Okay, I don't know anymore. Okay, I'm going to stop reading the comments, guys, because uh, I'm getting too distracted. But I just want to say a big thanks to uh, Bart, of course, for dressing up as Mr. Black this evening. Bart, fair play to you. Mine. Jesus, man, fair play to you. Your first time doing a sketch with us. At first time doing ever uh, acting bit. Yeah? It's in two weeks' time. In two weeks' time. Yes. First time doing an acting bit and first time doing a live presentation show. So fair play to you, man. Big shout out to Bartek um, for doing that with us today. Um, absolutely put on a stormer. And um, yeah, just went so, so smooth. I want to give a big shout to uh, Josh Cotley as well. Um, maybe we can point, can we point the camera at him or uh, is that possible? <laughs> Uh, but big shout out, yeah, give uh, Josh, go and peek your head in there. There we go. There's Josh just like walking into the shot. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Cotley, the amazing Josh Cotley, who is doing uh, some technical stuff for us. And as well, the wonderful Lauren, uh, who is actually has her last day with us uh, on Transmission TV. So I want to give her a lovely send off. Lauren's been with us as an intern uh, for the past couple of months and uh, she's been absolutely uh, more than anybody can ever uh, dream of as, a, as an intern uh, on something like this, on this kind of production. Uh, she's been an absolute pleasure uh, to work with. She really knows her stuff and um, it's, it's going to be really difficult to have somebody with even half of her skill set uh, here to, to help us on the show. So big shout out to her. Lauren, do you want to pop on and give us a wave? Do you want to do like a Josh Cotley uh, robot walk onto the stage? Oh. Um, uh, uh, no, I'm it's not going to put shy. you on the spot, don't worry. But Lauren's an absolutely amazing uh, person. She's, she's really, really awesomely skilled. So I wish, we all wish her the very best uh, in her new job. And, um, and yeah, and looking forward to seeing Lauren Gigan as well, of course, because Lauren is a bassist uh, for Laura Ryder and Persant. So really looking forward to that, Lauren. So thank you so much for all of the help here. You really, really uh, improved the show and improved, helped us to improve the quality and everything. So thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. So guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. You have been absolutely awesome. Fair play to you for all the wonderful comments and reactions to, and, and questions for our artists. Of course, um, without you guys, um, this would be quite a boring show because uh, it is all about the interaction. So fair play to you for being part of it and really solidifying the show with us 
and uh, being here with us, of course, uh, for those who have been with us uh, for a few months now, um, thanks so much for your commitment and uh, welcome to all the new people that have tuned in. I hope to see you all again. And um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit like that and like. subscribe, people. Like and subscribe. I love how just Keto comes in when I'm about to say like it. it favorite, uh, share it. <laughs> Keto loves saying that part. Uh, we need to get some of those uh, floating images, Keto, you know, like you know, to kind of save us saying it all the time. But uh, it really does help us, uh, you know, every subscribe, every uh, like does give us motivation to keep going. So it does really make a difference, truly. So um, please do consider sharing as well. And of course, we've got loads of other details if you wanted to join. Take it a step further and, uh, and hit us up on that Patreon as well, of course. So we're gonna be back in two weeks, guys. We've got some more great independent artists for you. As always, we're gonna have some more uh, sketches for you. And um, yeah, we're just gonna keep trying to make it as interesting and fun of a show for you as possible. So take it easy, guys. Have a wonderful Halloween. And we'll see you all very soon. Take it easy.